Hey everybody, this is Red Owen. We're back to another live stream of Shadowverse. Starting extremely late today. Um, my insomnia has just put me in a, a very weird sleep cycle where I'm barely waking up at 8 or 9 in the evening. Um, I was awake around noon, uh, just about to fall asleep, so I could have streamed in the middle of the... Um, in the middle of the uh, day, like a normal person, but I would have been so sleepy and so dragging there that I I just didn't think that it was quite to that point. I think probably sometime next week or maybe Friday uh, I'll be able to shift my sleep schedule once again, and and we will be closer to oh three four in the afternoon, five in the evening streaming times which is whether where I should probably try and stream for um I don't have enough of a sample size but I can say that streaming in the evening even really really late in the evening seems to work for my channel way better than streaming in the morning which just kind of highlights the stupidity of YouTube and how YouTube can just point you in the wrong direction as a content creator because the, they say pretty much they wouldn't send out notifications when you're streaming if they've sent out more than three. And on my channel, two notifications should be coming out from pre-recorded uh, footage. But maybe those notifications don't actually get sent out to everybody or anybody. So, yeah. I, I have to go with results that actually work. So, late night streams are what we're trying to focus evening streams of what we're trying to focus for uh for the accountability section the thing i would say is i guess i want to re-roll this um is that i have been playing pinball arcade uh i play judge dread very easy table not a table i particularly liked though so now i have a forest craft victory and a runecraft heaven craft and a dragon craft blood craft we should try and get blood craft today at least to make things more interesting um yeah judge dread is an interesting license uh for 1993 as far as the table anyways because it's not like too many people knew the 2001 uh the 2000, no, it's just 2000 AD comic in Judge Dredd. So, like, there's Judge Death I knew of, but then there's, like, four other evil judges that the table is around that are, like, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Um, and then Judge Anderson, the psychic judge that I didn't recognize or remember her name. Um, I think I'll just hop into, not even bother to, no, we should, we should, we should not change our methods here. We should get rid of the duplicates after we open a pack. That way we know we're making progress. Arguably, I should sit on vials and use vials to to make tournament decks going forward that would be really really expensive though that's kind of something you'd want to do after you had a, a complete collection of all the cards and ideally I, I still would love to see a collectible card game that just straight up said we're gonna give temporary cards or, or the equivalent of temporary cards uh, to new players of the unlimited decks and that buying cards and buying packs didn't give you a out. permanent exclusive in right to fire. to those cards um exclusive in the sense that it, not everybody else was would get them um and instead it was buying packs in a collectible card game gave you early access to cards that Four years down the line we're going to be handed to everybody of course you'd almost have to say that from day one that's how it's going to play uh, that 
four years down the line, as soon as something comes out of rotation, uh, the decks, uh, the cards are just going to be free for everybody. Um, or find some other way to make sure each each person could get the cards, could earn them some way. Uh, what other pinball tables did I cover besides Judge Dredd? There was a... Hmm. Last Action Hero pinball table, which... It, it's just kind of ridiculous to play a pinball table based on an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie that nobody remembers. So, like... I didn't really know any of the characters. Uh, there's, I vaguely recall there was a, a Bond little kid in the movie, but apparently there's also this teenage looking girl uh, that plays a role in the bad guy. Uh, I don't remember anything about him. Um, and the table, once again, felt like it was a lot of ego stroking to Arnold Schwarzenegger, there's still a lot of characters from the movie who could have had lines of dialogue in the game and they just don't. Um, it isn't like Terminator 2 where almost every line of dialogue is said by um, by Arnold Schwarzenegger, but it's far too close. It's not audio encoded correctly, uh, so the audio sounds weird. Um, and the music kind of abruptly cuts out when they play a Arnold Schwarzenegger line, so that makes it sound weird too. But mostly the, the problem with that table and so many other tables is just the angles, just the shots are, are terrible and, and it's very, very difficult to, to pull off what you're supposed to pull off as far as shooting up a ramp or sh hitting a standing target or hitting a scoop. Um, the Judge Dread table also has a feature that started you in a super, uh, super game. And super games effectively were um, were super games were effectively the Big trouble now. <laughs> don't want to evolve I guess probably does help to evolve here uh, super game just starts with a two ball multi ball but on Judge Dredd there's a way to easily call for backup and have like six balls potentially on the table at the same time so there's a there's a lot of room for for things to to happen and add a lot of randomness. Six ball multi ball is insane. Y even a four ball multi ball is pretty crazy. Um, um, but yeah, I've seen seen in the 1992-93 era, we're starting to see a few tables doing that. Um, I know I played more than two tables, but I honestly cannot remember the other two tables that I covered. And I've I've been increasingly spending more and more time on the tables too, so 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 like I'm spending an hour and an hour and thirty minutes playing the tables. And I'm looking up after like 40 minutes and it feels like I've been playing for just like 20 minutes. <laughs> Which I guess means the tables are getting better for sure. Uh, Oh, I also, there was also a Bram Stoker's Dracula based on Bram Stoker's Dracula movie, the movie, which just totally doesn't feel like what Dracula means to me in 2021. And, and it just, I don't think was a well-designed table. And, and you're kind of having a reoccurring theme here where we're seeing, where I'm saying that a lot, just really 
poorly designed tables. Bram Stoker's Dracula has this Dracula toy that at some point I think the Dracula is supposed to rise from his coffin. I could never get the game to actually do it because I couldn't get the angle to launch the ball there. It has three different multi balls, so theoretically you could have nine balls on the table and three different multi ball modes enabled at the same time. Um, but the shots were so difficult that I couldn't actually pull that off. Um, it does have like a magnet on the table that slowly moves a ball from one side of the table to the other side of the table and you're supposed to try and knock that that pinball out of the way to start a, a quick multi-ball, two-ball multi-ball. Um, Hmm. I'm gonna just have to take some hits here, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if there's a way to play this. Basically, I would need to do two cards, then this, then this, then this, and unless I just had a whole bunch of fairies sitting in my hand, which maybe that is the strategy towards something like this. Um, there's a magnet in Last Action Hero that just grabs the ball and moves it, and it's in the exact center of the lower play field, so it, it just screws you, is all, the, all it does on the table. It, it does not ever benefit the player in any way, form, or fashion. It, it's just insanity, and the second I saw it do its thing and it drained the ball down the center, uh, that was my last point at which I would have any interest in playing the last action here as a table. Um, there's a table called Gladiator that was like a throwback to the 70s where it's these sci-fi... It, it kind of feels like it would have been based around American gladiators. Um, more than anything... Um, and that they just didn't get the license to American Gladiators, but that's what they were shooting for. Um, but yeah, that that's pretty much the only only thing I could think of as far as why that table even existed. It, really, it just felt like the Gladiator as a table that came out in 92, I believe was created by some old pinball designer who wanted to to make something that he was nostalgic for from the 70s without learning any of the new tricks. Uh, a couple of tables by 93 don't have like video modes. Last Action Hero has no video mode where we've seen in 92 some games definitely did have video modes at that point but and they dev and these tables do have LCD screens and they're just not implementing or using them as well as they should. Uh, so it almost feels like they somehow got the message that having video modes and pinball was not appreciated. Maybe originally it wasn't and then people eventually warmed to it or maybe it was just some, some companies had the resources to program video modes and some didn't. Like even the tables in 92 that did have video modes had they pretty much had one video mode and that's it <clears throat> and yeah i'm fairly certain i played a fourth fourth table but uh, i can't even remember um there was gladiator there was Bram Stoker's dracula there was last action hero and then there was one that I really did like. 
and uh, and Judge Dredd. Yeah. Um, no, I didn't like really any of them that bad, and and so on Pinball Arcade, there's a row of eight pinball tables, and in the row, there's one more table for me to play, but there's been maybe two at best really good tables, and that's it. The rest of them are pretty disappointing. However, I know at the next row is two of the best tables ever, so unless something crazy happens and I I somehow decide Twilight Zone or Star Trek The Next Generation isn't as good as I remember, uh, there's, there's a high chance of success. So, yeah, that's what I've been mostly doing. I'm still working on the Circuit Playground Express. Something I did on the code has caused it to actually run extremely slow on the actual circuit board. I haven't been doing a lot of testing of the code actually on the circuit board instead of using the simulator, so it may be a case that my code was always too complicated uh, to actually run on the 48 megahertz processor that this chip has anyways. So it, it might be that I need to rethink things. It might be that the way the event handler works is poor and I should have things process and check to see if a button is pressed one at a time instead of allowing the event handlers to do it. Theoretically, in embedded systems, I shouldn't be programming that way. That like it should be a case where well let's see what do we want to do it, it should be a case where the event handlers are the better way to do things because the event handlers should have their own dedicated circuitry there's also timers in the embedded chip, so theoretically, using an, a, a timer, which although you can't set the timer, you can reset it, um, should be a better way to use, um, to implement goals than, than not using it, uh, than creating your own variable and counting up yourself. So I'm trying to see if I can implement things like that in a in a good way, or if that matters or not. But yeah, I may very well have to just strip out a massive amount of code and see what's going on. I made the mistake of converting the code with the make code website generator between um, between the scratch make code blocks scratch style make code blocks and um, uh, to javascript and then when i went from javascript back it it lost some of the translation in the code so that that created some new problems but yeah theoretically my my code is um is further along than in practicality it actually is. It's, it's not. Uh, I'm gonna have to upload the code to the circuit board and see if the circuit board would ever run. Uh, even simple things like getting it to play music seems to not really work as well as as well as it should. To the point where I'm starting to wonder if the 48 megahertz, which is right smack between what a, uh, like 286 uh, SX chip would make, would, would be at, versus a, like, 286 DX or 386 DX, which would go into turbo mode at 
66 megahertz and then 286 sx i think was 33 megahertz so the the uh, processing power is incredibly low compared to really 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 old 20 30 year old computers um, uh, equivalent but it the optimization there should be actually very high because you're not running an operating system and you don't have that major overhead of running an operating system. Although effectively, if you're using make code, maybe you are still running a lot of overhead opti optimization and overhead code um, for the simplicity factor there. Um, so, yeah, theoretically 48 megahertz for an embedded chip should be able to pull off quite a lot, but maybe not that much. If it isn't that much or if it is just, um, just the case that it's, that I'm pushing it to the limit and I can't go right much further. That really highlights where something like just look at Playground Express and other chips similar, the micro bit, uh, for instance, they're not particularly overpowered enough to really give a great experience. And that there's just a kind of different frugalness, for lack of a better term, when programming for an embedded system versus programming for a computer. When I was taught C++ programming, uh, even a long time ago, we had pretty powerful computers that could could have enough RAM, have enough processing power to just get away from uh, any issue that might arise from, from being a from poor code, as it were. Be gone. <laughs> so, uh, you just don't have that with, with something like the Circuit Playground Express. And that that's really what I, I'm seeing a lot of examples. When I do see example codes, you, it is someone program. It is usually a kid programming a Circuit Playground Express to do one trick, and one trick only. Um, and that's weird to have a board that has like two buttons, a switch, an accelerometer, a light sensor, a microphone, or a noise uh, level sensor. Not really a microphone per se. I wouldn't really call it that. And five touch sensitive uh, connectors and some other connectors. It, it's ridiculous that you can theoretically do all of that, but in practicality you can't because every single um, every single thing you try to program will take up the maximum amount of Breach of contract, huh? Do we want to evolve this? Get back here. Or do we want to just attack. So, yeah, as I'm playing with this, I, I feel like you would probably still be better to spend mm, a little bit more getting a Raspberry Pi, or even a Raspberry Pi Zero um, or W or Zero without the wireless. You're a solid fighter. Having something like that, having it plug into a... Um, a monitor that you wouldn't give the kids at the end of the the learning lab um, having it plug into a keyboard that you wouldn't give to the kids but handing them the Pi Zero and a power supply um, which even the power supply issue uh, if, it, if the power supplies were better handled by the Raspberry Pi I wouldn't even hand, hand them that 
Um, but yeah, you might better be better off with a eight gigabyte micro SD in a Raspberry Pi Zero running Debian OS and a Python uh, programmer and teaching kids Python from this day one instead of trying to teach make code, trying trying to teach embedded coding when that, that embedding coding really is just a sidestep and a confusing sidestep to say the least towards what most programmers would do. Um, the idea of programming for embedded circuitry was something that pretty much didn't exist when I was in school learning programming. Like, if you were making something like a speak and say type device, there was literally no embedded programming there. There was no chip there. You were building it from the electronics alone. Uh, you were making a custom chip and building it from scratch. Uh, and I don't know if there's really going to be a major increase in embedded device programming in the next 30 years or if it is more just going to be a case of more and more system on the chips style full operating systems like the Raspberry Pi are going to um, are going to pop up and replace embedded devices and I wouldn't ever trust something like the Circuit Playground Express to be on the level of a proper industrial embedded device, something that was controlling like a nuclear reactor or something along that lines. Uh, so I would never trust it to, to not glitch out. Hmm. I can't evolve that because I want to do anything. What does this do? Nope, it's just in the train. Hmm. So yeah, I, I think a much better project is to, to give a Raspberry Pi to your kid and give them Python on it. Plus, Raspberry Pis have the beauty of Oh yeah, you can s say wink wink nudge nudge. You can get your legally collected ROMs on this RetroPie and play video games on it. Or you can set up a RetroPie for a kid and get them interested in playing games on a, a small computer like the Raspberry Pi and use that as a backdoor introduction to small uh, using computers and things like that. RetroPie is very far away from programming or doing any real customization now. So there is a consideration around that, is that a also. Okay, so we can hit that one. And then that one. Hmm. One of the problems, I think, particularly about the Circuit Playground Express, is that the price is just not going down. And I know there's a short, ch short chip shortage right now, but it, it really is a device that, that needed to be a $5 device to start with. And I think the Stima QT probably makes a little bit more sense. Uh, but I don't think that's supported by make code or anything like that. So, but yeah, doing circuit Python on the Stemic QT and then having to to plug several other devices into the Stemic QT to read data and use them. So if you want to plug a screen into it, that's another five dollars or like ten dollars or fifteen dollars. If you want to plug a a microphone in it, that's another five dollars breaking it down so it has a puzzle piece type design um, makes a lot more sense hmm. Let's do this. 
didn't work out as well as I would have liked, but ideally both of these would have gotten a boost of defense. But they didn't, so I probably should just play them. Hmm. But certainly that's where my mind has been as far as this long rambling 30 minute um, um, catch up time. I did turn on both of my servers. They had been off since power outages happened. I'd say three or four weeks ago, and I was like, "Yeah, it's, I, I, I can't let these things stay powered off, even if they're not really doing anything and they're not configured. They need to be on to keep the capacitors in charged." So I turned them back on, and I also need to fix my printer because the print head is clogged up because I use cheaper non-HP ink and got screwed on that, which, yeah, that sucks. I may end up having to buy a whole new printer uh, because it's more cost efficient to buy a whole new printer than it is to, to try and find a print head. Hmm. Alright. What do we want to do? This is that a human? This, I think. My raging flames have got your back. It won't be long now. Go ahead and evolve this. Where's the heat of your that twig won't do a thing? Hit that. Hmm. So yeah, well let's go through the video game news. We don't I don't have any reason to, to be playing till midnight. We still are in a very slow standing uh, standing pattern as far as as far as video game. There's not been any real video game news that has come out, uh, but well, very little. There haven't been any large amounts of major AAA games coming out. Um, I think there have been maybe a couple bits of news, but I've. I very possibly am gonna forget some stuff that I won't have articles for. It was almost a week ago I did see that G4 made a a video that went down the route of just highlighting all the terrible games on Steam, which that's not something G4 has done in the past and. It's really not a direction I want to see G4 go. If anything, G4 was known for highlighting really, really good games, or at least finding some fun with really, really bad games. Uh, so the idea of uh, the, the idea of potentially just going down that path of of pissing on terrible games is not something I'd like them to do. They, they have the resources to play the good games and find the good games a lot more. Uh, this is very much a do as I say, not as I do type sentence for me to say because that's exactly what I do is I talk about every single game that comes out on Steam often pissing on the the terrible games that come out, but I said I was going to play Bloodcraft, and I didn't, did not play Bloodcraft at all, have I? Um, but yeah, particularly for G4, this reboot that hasn't even happened yet, I they have not bothered to really cover any games at all. They're doing these short little clips and, and videos. There, there's no long in-depth reviews that that I think that they were more known for as far as X-Play was concerned. And, and yeah, them being piffy is not what I want at all. Hmm. That is certainly one of the things that originally brought me to liking Giant Bomb many, many years ago when Giant Bomb was good uh, was the fact that they were doing 
longer gameplay reviews and full and, and what felt like more complete reviews of games um, and they've completely shifted away from that to just quick looks which aren't even that quick um, to talk about games to to know will uh, to, to really not even like any of the games and barely they do they they barely are doing any quick looks at least as far as what they put out publicly maybe you have to be in their special little club to get to actual content um, and certainly putting things behind a paywall is another thing that I I can't really abide um, I could almost see doing that for my channel if I was just a jerk uh, and so I may eat my words at some point if I did get big enough to justify a paywall but I don't think I'd ever want to do that um, but yeah I could see my pre-recorded footage being behind a paywall just because so many people don't watch that anyways uh, but no that that's not the business model that I want to have. I want people to be able to see my content and I want to be able to highlight and cover a bunch of other games. Uh, speaking of, well, not really speaking of, but I, I did just remember that the uh, game Balin Wonderland, which seemingly everybody agrees is a pretty awful game, has now been accused of plagiarizing the Ghostbusters theme in this game. And so, yeah, I don't know, maybe if, maybe it really is closer to a parody or not, but, uh, people certainly aren't happy with Balin Wonderland as a quality of game. Um, yeah. Overall, I am completely unimpressed with this G4 reboot. And that's what I said at the beginning, too, is that, they may very well just use the hype around G4 to create something very different and something that isn't that interesting. I, even in its heyday, I feel like X-Play probably was maintained and run not just because Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb had good stage presence and voices. I think there was probably a significant amount of of, of hard-working people behind the scenes that were actually playing the games some of those games for them I wouldn't be surprised if there was 10 or 20 people playing games so that Morgan Webb and Adam Sessler can be the um, could be the stage presence to, to announce G-Force collective opinion on the game Hmm. So, yeah, and I, I'm just not seeing that. Now would be, like, 2020, 2021 would be the time for, for Western video game reviewers in particular to embrace a lot of the old, long-running JRPGs that are two or three hundred hours long, uh, since there's basically nothing else going on. I, that is certainly what I have done. I've played two visual novels uh, almost back to back. Hmm. Alright, well, I need to hurry up. I don't want this to go forever. We have a game on Steam here called Tactical Battle Chronicles Prelude to a War, which looks like it's a position RPG turn based game. The graphics don't look particularly good. $13.49 is way too expensive. English full audio. Let's see. Gamma Sutra has an article here. Get a job. Sucker Punch Productions uh, is looking for a senior writer in Bellevue, Washington. 
If they're looking for a writer, then that means they are close, like one or two years into the development of a new gameplay mechanic in a new game, but they, and so they're now hitting that stage two. I don't have that many um, tabs open in the first place, obviously, see if I can jump around like I'd like to. Um, Gametsu has an article, a Seinfeld parody action horror comedy game called Seinfeld Remastered has been announced for a PS5, which this definitely looks like a low effort joke game that is getting somehow listed and published on the PlayStation 5. See. Yeah, it seems like you're playing as George Constanza, and that does not really look like George Constanza. Like this, this really is more of a joke. Yeah, this is a garbage joke game that. Like, this is something you would make as an April Fool's Day joke. This is not something you would you would actually try and sell. Hmm. Hmm. You're not even playing as Seinfeld. This is also an Akira parody as much as it is a parody on uh, Seinfeld. It, honestly... That that's the kind of joke that somebody would get high and, and laugh about. It's not something that you would actually bother to animate. How that's getting published, I have no idea. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets copyright claimed. Yeah. The last thing the PlayStation needs. And let's face it, we, we do want competition, so we don't want to see the PlayStation just completely fail, even if the Sony Interactive Entertainment of California probably deserves it. Uh, like, because there is no direct connection between the idea that the PlayStation 5 fails and PlayStation in general just fails as a product, and then some other company is going to go oh, there's a gap in the market, and we're going to fill that gap. It, it may very well be that if the PlayStation failed, then there will just be the Xbox and the Nintendo Switch, which are very different things, and PC gaming, which is a different thing. Particularly with the chip shortage, now is not the time to, to say, oh, we can push people into to PC gaming particularly easy because a lot of people have realized that their computers have been sitting around doing nothing and they're not strong enough to run Zoom, let alone even play old games. Um, yeah. So they, they really need to fix things. And if... if if it were a case that the Japanese branch of Japan, Sony Interactive Entertainment, was a genius, like the person in charge was, uh, was, was a genius, um, then there might be an idea. Uh, there, where they they would hand rain control over to the California office for a year, let the California office fail miserably, and then Sony, the Sony Japanese office would take over control and say, "See, we are better. We're, we're the better people. We we should be in control." If that was the genius like 4D chess move then why are so many people in Sony of Japan's office getting, uh, leaving, which I assume really they are, um, being asked to leave or being pushed out because Japanese people don't just quit. Hmm. 
Hmm. Let's go and play this. Do I want to evolve? Yeah, that 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 thought that this is a 4D chess move, and Sony Interactive Entertainment of Japan is going to come back and take control, and, and it's going to be a whole new generation, and PlayStation 5 will get turned around, and PlayStation 6 will be better than ever. Like that that is that is not. It doesn't ring as true. It doesn't seem realistic at all that that'd be the case. Even if that was the case, we, we've seen enough old people leave that if right now Sony Interactive Entertainment of Japan took over again, uh, they would be such a lesser company than they were a year ago that uh, that still wouldn't make any sense. Uh, moving on, we have a game called Aaron's Adventure, which looks rather good. It's low polygon, so I don't like that art style particularly great, but there's a decent amount of public polish here. It feels like it's trying to be a Zelda Breath of the Wild uh, style game. It's mostly positive. $26.99 is fairly expensive, English for Lania, but I definitely think that deserves a follow. And it is well on its way to being potentially to the wish list, sent to the wish list with 22 pos mostly positive reviews. A game like that certainly, though, does does have some issues. Like just because of the visuals there, I'm not sure I would ever really be um, super hyped to play it versus other games, but. Also, I could see myself, if I get 30 or 40 more games uh, down before the next sell, like, I could see myself starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel as far as games. Let's see. Do I want to evolve something? Hmm. I feel like I have to do this. The whales of the damned. Do this. And then hit that. And then hit that. And do that. Uh, again, Mr. Tres, an article here. The Resident Evil Village director shares the process behind creating its imposing antagonist. Which, yeah. I really have to wonder how... Uh, check out this article if you want to read it. Uh, you'll probably spoil yourself a little bit on the game. Um, I, I really do have to wonder, though, how much time you're really going to spend around uh, the large lady in the game. It's kind of like the father character in Resident Evil 7. He, he was introduced and would pop up and then kind of disappear uh, in Resident Evil 7, but by the halfway point, he, he had mutated into a big monster and you had defeated him, and then there was a whole the second half of, of the game. Um, remember, this is called Resident Evil Village, and, and so far all they've teased is uh, sneaking around a vampire castle. So, so the whole village part feels like it's either going to be uh, it's going to be in the back half of the, that game, and it feels like the part that they haven't really worked on. Hmm. Uh, Gamatsu has an article, De Deadly Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise, is coming to PC in 2021. It's currently available for the Switch. 
it also was pretty bad and ran pretty terribly. Um, Deadly Premonition 1 didn't particularly run very well on PC either. So, um, you have to be fairly careful about are you buying into the hype there or, um, or are you Yeah, you you want to be you want to be careful to not end up um, end up end up playing Deadly Premonition one and two because you're hyped around it and and then having a pretty terrible experience. That's one of the reasons why I haven't gotten around to playing it, which because I think I do own the first game. Is it? Yeah, I feel like there would be better visually uh, niche games to, to cover. I, I think I, I'd more prefer to play a Neptunia game in versus Deadly Premonition or a JRPG game or a visual novel. Hmm. Here we have a game on Steam called LSD Prologue to the Last Lasting Spiritual Derangement which this seems like it is an acid flip game that is supposed to simulate the experience of, of being on LSD. I don't think it probably really does that. It's a demo for something else. English full audio. Yep. And now I can easily say no to that. Here we have a game called Cosmic Tank, which looks like it is a space top-down shooter. Early access, 4.99 English full audio. Early access is still a big issue in that we are not really seeing um, I am the fallen leaf. not really seeing any great content uh, that deserves to be an early access. Here we have a game on Steam called Darren's Miracle which this is a slightly better polished version of one of the anime girl games we've seen. The hentai Nazi shooter games. Uh, seems like what they're going with in this game, and I think this probably would be the, the better direction to try to make a game, is to have a single character you're interested in and have them not jumping through. The, the next step would be have them in a single iconic outfit because this is kind of an iconic outfit so having them in red bikinis doesn't make a lot of sense there seems to be some very basic uh, goals this is 59 cents English full audio 10 levels um, that being said I don't for a second expect them to actually improve I, I fully believe um, hmm that uh, like I fully believe that the people who are creating these low effort games uh, were were doing something to, to to just wander money and nothing else so Daenerys Miracle I don't even know how you pronounce that war name uh, still isn't making it anywhere close to the follow list uh, and I'm not sure I really want to see low effort games get better in their quality so it just confuses the issue more that would be an effect of actual curation on the part of Valve and Steam but um, but the the goal and it would be if Steam actually did curate would be that it is it would require such a high level of quality for a game to actually be listed that people would would not bother to make low effort games and they would actually have to have passion and a desire to to make a good game in the first place before they even try in the same way that 
if I was to try and build a brand new car model from scratch, it would take so much effort to do it correctly and get it approved to be street legal that I would either have to really commit to making a good car or I would give up immediately. And for me personally, since I don't know how to build cars or design car models, I would give up immediately. Um, and that has created a scenario where there's nearly zero cars on the road that are hand built from junk and parts laying around. Right. All right, well, and the what and the two. let's see. Can't evolve there. I could evolve there. I could evolve there. And the what and the two. Uh, let's see. Next, we have a game on Steam called Crate Catastrophe, <laughs> which is a shooter. Looks like it might even be a VR shooter game where you're shooting these floating crates. It's basically a puzzle game. It's not polished enough though. $4.99 actually doesn't use VR. This guy is pumping up this card quite a lot. Well, that's one way to get wrecked, I s assume. Next, we have a game on Steam called Steel Salvo, which looks like nothing. Looks like it's a mech shooter game. Yeah, just just a little too blocky. It's free, so I guess the price is right. English full audio. They're calling it an arena shooter. I am just getting wrecked by Shadowverse left and right. I haven't been able to get the daily quests done in over a week. Um, and I'm consciously, at least on the, on the top of the level of consciousness, just saying screw it, I don't care. But subconsciously, it probably is affecting me that there's just a very high lose ratio going on right now not enough that i would take take time out of my my schedule uh to to play more shadowverse uh gamma sutra has an article steam works as expand marketing tools with open beta for utm traffic uh analytics which urchin tracking module analytics i would have thought that would have meant up to the minute Hmm. I guess that helps people market their games better. I have no idea what that really is, though. That is something I've never heard of before. That is definitely too inside baseball. A game called Alex Kidd and Miracle World DX adds a PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series version, launching June 24th. This is not a game I recall ever hearing it being announced. I know the Alex Kidd series is a platforming series from back in the day that they're trying to bring back. Hmm. Hmm. Definitely looks like a old school NES style platformer that has been updated. Hmm. Yeah. 
there might be something here, but I could also see this being just a lot of platforming. But arguably, there is enough relevancy around Alex Kidd that uh, it would be justified to cover this game and get this game. It does have a PC version already announced. So there's something to that. Here we have a game called Parallax Tunnel, which looks like it's an infinite runner. Yeah, doesn't look like there's really anything here. 59 cents, English full audio. If anything, 2021 might be the counter argument to, towards curation as far as games on Steam. If Valve and Steam were just terrified of the idea of only 10 games being released every week on a platform, uh, that that would be the argument against curation. Um, I suppose the Epic Game Store kind of does have that going on, and the Xbox Game Store kind of has that going on. They really only release maybe five to ten new games a week on both of those platforms. <clears throat> and arguably, itch.io is is not big enough to be the place where everybody can list everything. So there needs to be some storefront where everything gets listed. Uh, and I suppose Valve has just decided that they were going to be the place for it. As promised, you don't belong here. Here we have a game called Before the Battery's Over, which looks like it is just some custom art of a robot that you make into a puzzle. A dollar nineteen English only. It's an interesting idea to make your own custom art instead of just stealing other people's art or licensing photos at best and potentially trying to have a narrative between different puzzle pieces is is an interesting thought like jigsaw puzzle games are by their own nature going to be finite so knowing that it's going to be finite from the beginning it does it does make an interesting argument towards towards uh, putting a narrative around that. Point-and-click adventure games are effectively a puzzle with a narrative around it. A lot of the walking uh, simulators are, have little puzzles in them uh, with a narrative around them. So that concept has been done before with better gameplay mechanics. I just haven't ever seen it done with such a cheap gameplay mechanic hidden object games effectively often have a narrative around them um, while you're doing the hidden object puzzles hmm. alright vengeance activated hmm No. Hmm. You don't belong here. Let's go and hit that. I'm not afraid of the light. And then as hit. promised. Hmm. Pretty much have to do that. And then hit that. Next, we have a game called Binger Ninja, Ninja, or Binger Ninja. Hmm. I feel like this is somebody trying to sneak around a a, a dirty word or something. Regardless of that, though, this looks like it's nothing. Ninety-nine cents English only. Definitely not interesting-looking game. Uh, Three's creator, 
forms a new studio called Vodio Games to create cozy, crunchy experience. Threes is a game, I assume. I don't, off the top of my head, re recognize it though. I imagine it's some simplistic number game. Hmm. Alright, well, I've got to play something here. Otherwise, I'm going to die. That in the turn. Uh, a game called Edge of Eternity launches on June eighth for PC and in quarter four of twenty twenty one for PS five and Xbox Series and PS four and Xbox One. This looks like another Final Fantasy game from Square Enix. But pretty much all the Final Fantasy style games seem to look like that. Hmm. Let's see if we can look at the trailers. Doesn't look bad. And there definitely are some of these JRPGs that if they are, are just not going to be tied to uh, Final Fantasy, they seem like that makes a smarter move. This, this also seems like this is some kind of futuristic world um, with a different feel to it it's from Dear Villagers not Square Enix Let's see alright well four damage to that and then Allow me to take my cut. That. This is as far as I can go. Hmm. We've got a game called Spaceship Drift, which looks like a spaceship racing game. Where you're kind of like a Mario Kart style game. Where you're trying to drift. Five ninety nine English only. Don't see anything there. What's funny here is I felt like there wasn't that many uh, bits of things to talk about today, but we may very well find out that there actually is quite quite a lot to talk about. You know what I need to do is stop playing ranked and just just play unranked and just get the daily quest done. Because at, at this point, trying to get ranked and getting those treasure chests isn't even worth it if you're if you're just going to be losing an failed. almost 100% ratio. Here we have a game called Gnomans Mancer. Uh, like Gnome and Necromancer or something. Calling it a casual adventure, I'd call it a co-op top-down twin-stick shooter. Uh... They're saying something like Pikeman meets Gauntlet. $7.19 is an interesting price tag because that puts it in the middle of a couple different prices. Um, and this is single player only where it feels like it would have... Single player with shared split screen co op, where it feels like that would have been something more to focus on. As an online game. I, I feel like this is just too much, though. Like a lot of top down twin stick shooters, I, I feel like you're going to just have a lot of busyness visually. Yeah, seems like. There's a ridiculous amount of loot that drops, and there's a ridiculous amount of little characters and gnomes that you're going to have following you, and 
all they've got is this little trailer and then a bunch of screenshots so that trailer really undersells it and that would have been the only thing that would have convinced me to put this on the follow list is if it had a slightly better trailer and it doesn't next we have a game on steam called quintera which looks like it is a hex grid placement game it's tagged as a turn-based tactics roguelike hmm. and see I feel like loop hero may have encouraged other people to make games like this or may encourage people to play games like this when generally I would just dismiss a game like this this is 1274 English full audio um, yeah I just don't see myself playing that kind of game Next we have Void Surfer, which is a space flying twin stick shooter. Yeah. Maybe it has some physics in it to where you develop your ship, but I still don't like the graphics and I still don't like the gameplay and the theme. Seven dollars and nineteen cents English full audio. Like Here we have one called Little Monkey Eats Banana, which looks terrible. Looks like a student project, or it was made in MS Paint for $4.99. Something like that could easily have not been allowed on Steam. Hmm. Let's see. Discard a card. Let's see, here we have a game called A Guard Walks Into a Tavern, which is a description, not really a name of a game. And it looks like it is a mostly text-based um, Chinese game, if I was to guess. Early access, $7.99, Chinese only, yeah. I don't think there really is a game here. Next, we have a game called Trial of Destiny, which looks like a top-down twin-stick shooter. There might be enough polish here to make an argument for this. Maybe. It's early access. It's 11.89. Uh, for fear of not putting anything on the fall list at all today, I'm going to put that on the fall list, which that is a terrible justification. Uh, I know, but I really do think we are getting down to that route. Alright, well, this, and then get rid of that. And then... Put that back on the field. And then evolve. Dragons reign by divine right. Hmm. Obstruct me not. That one. That one. Yeah. Nope. That is not what I meant to hit. The cards moved. That's some great ABS. Here we have a joke game called Meat Beating No More Horny, which, how this was allowed on Steam, I have no idea. 99 cents English only. Like, these things should not be allowed on a professional storefront. Uh, we have Laid Back Camp Virtual Fomoto Campsite. Now, there's basically two Laid Back Camp games, two different 
campsite. So they're saying selling you the same game basically in in a couple different places. One is on the beach. One is in the grasslands uh, or in the forest. This is 19.99. Requires VR. Uh, this is our home, right? Japanese full audio. It definitely feels very anime-esque. I don't know how long these experiences would really go. Um, is this perhaps looped in some way that it that you can just camp forever and hang out with people and they do different activities at random, kind of like a Johnny Castaway, um, and the equivalent of a modern Johnny Castaway screensaver, or does it stop at a certain point? I wouldn't be surprised if it did, if it does have a narrative and does actually stop. Um, Okay. What can we do? Just gotta evolve. Whoa, I think I snagged a catch and release. That. Be seeing you. And attack. So yeah, I'm gonna put that on the fall. I put put that game on the fall list, mostly because. Of the fact that it's a VR game, although, yeah, and I seriously doubt VR is going to be adopted by me any time in my lifetime at this rate. Here we have a game, Pixel Game Maker Series, Aussie Berry Horigio. Poland slash. I wonder if these are real Asian terms or if this is just made up uh, gibberish. This doesn't look terrible, but if I recall correctly, the Pixel Game Maker series is just around the idea of them pub publishing and pushing Pixel Game Maker. This is Japanese full audio. I guess I have to put this on the follow list. And then I want to look at this developer and see that this is the first game they've made. And look at this publisher, though, and see that it is... We've seen a large collection of pixel game maker games. It's the publisher, I suppose, branding it that way. Whereas, if, it was if this game was just called this part only i wouldn't give it any extra scrutiny and i'd put it on a fall list so probably should be as fair as i can be with that hmm. Hmm. and then we have a game called eight doors arum's afterlife adventure which Seems like it's a frustration platformer, but it's got some visual polish to it. They're going for an art style. So, it's tagged as a Metroidvania adventure game. It's $15.99. Bunch of languages. No full audio support on anything. I, and I kind of appreciate that idea of them not lying and saying that they have full audio if they don't have voice acting. I'm gonna put this on the fall list. I think this might actually be good. Has this developer made anything else? Nope. Wow, it does feel like on a rare occasion you might actually be able to succeed and have a good experience, a, a good new game from a good new company. Alright, so I've got to abandon Ranked. Ranked is dead to me at this point. And if anything, I said I was going to take do a take two and I've started so late today and I forgot about that. So yeah, doing a take two draw would be really smart to do right now, but I'm going to wait till Friday and we'll try then. 
Meanwhile, what I need is to just play unranked, play the fairies, see if we can get a quick disconnect. Uh, several sources had this, but Gamma Sutra has said that the Embracer Group has completed its 1.38 billion acquisition of Borderlands developer gearbox, um, which we will see if that changes anything for Gearbox and Borderlands as a series. Um, well, for Gearbox in particular, it really won't change too much for Borderlands as a series because EA owns the rights. No, I mean 2K owns the rights to the Borderlands series. And Borderlands 3 has not particularly done a great job. I was just watching a video earlier today uh, highlighting that fans of Borderlands series are very disappointed with the post-game uh, gameplay and the weapons in the mayhem mode after you've played the main story don't scale so instead of doing mayhem level one and enjoying it and then gradually making it to mayhem level two you should pretty much just jump to mayhem level 10 and then start grinding for weapons because it's because mayhem level one weapons are not uh, not anywhere as good as mayhem level two versus three versus four and so on uh, hmm. uh, let's see a first person shooter survival shooter called abandoned has been announced for the playstation 5 which seeing that last game that was announced for the playstation 5 sinfeld i have to wonder if maybe this is a low effort garbage game too i mean literally all you're seeing here is trees as i'm skipping through this trailer yeah maybe a little bit more visual polish as far as the the gun and the trees but that is hardly enough of a trailer to catch anyone's attention Yeah, we have a game on Steam called Combi Travels, Jigsaw Landscapes, which it's another Jigsaw game around somewhat of a theme in a narrative. $1.19 English only. Nothing there. Gets that onto the fall list. Uh, we already talked about the Resident Evil Reverse beta, which may mean that a lot of the things I have clicked on are redundant. Uh, Tech Raptor has a Forager multiplayer update uh, being cancelled. Okay. And apparently you can get refunds from different places. So, Forager is a game never looked that interesting to me in the first place, but they we're trying to turn it into a multiplayer experience where I don't think even with multiplayer it would have really made a lot of sense. It definitely felt like one of many games that think they can add multiplayer after the fact and you can't. You've got to from day one from the ground up be planning on having multiplayer which pretty much means you have to have multiplayer available from day one to, to launch it. Um, you're, a multiplayer audience is not going to come in two weeks after a game has launched and, and start playing it in almost every case. Uh, Among Us is kind of the exception that proves the rule on that. Uh, here we have a game on Steam called Captain Coffer 2D, which looks like a very old school arcade style platformer, shoots and ladders game. Uh, that's probably the best way to produce it, to call it. Um, a dollar ninety nine English only. Yeah, I don't see anything here of of interest. My domain reaches hmm. to the end of the sky. Yeah. Hmm. Here we have a game called the Little Red Lie. Which looks like it's a side scroller, Chinese, maybe Chinese game. 
See, it's a unique art style, but I don't know if this is a infinite runner or what, because it kind of feels like it's an infinite runner. Like you're just gonna run one direction, run into something, and then and then run the other way. Seems like maybe you're. Yeah, I guess you're collecting some items too. This is a interesting artistic shift from Little Red Riding Hood into a horror game. Uh, this is free to play, English only. I kind of wish this was written. It said that this was a student project. But I'm going to put this on the fault list. I want to see what people have to say about it. Since it's completely free, I'd say just go check this game out. It's probably not super long. Um, it's crazy, particularly at this moment, to to release a game for free. When there's we are at almost an all-time low as far as competition amongst video games. Um, here we have a game on Steam called Duck Creator, which... Seems to be ducks with different hats. Which if this was free, I'd be fine with it. But the 79 cents is too expen expensive. English that? only. Yeah. It's really it's just kind of asset flipping. Oh, yet again. Let's see. Uh... Gamma Switcher has a blog here. Steam's marketing, tracking, epics, exclusivity, data, and more. And some of these, this is really just a combination of several other of Gamma Sutra's articles. Steam Game Store exclusives. Apparently, a long list here of exclusives are no longer exclusives. Um, so there's like three games here that are exclusive. Um, Among Trees, if I'm reading this right. Uh, Chivalry 2. And Godfall. I, I imagine it, it is definitely a case that the Epic Game Store Exclusive reveals was not really working for either side. What an oath. Hmm. How did I miss that? And that's probably what happened to the exclusives. A stylistic horror adventure game called Of Love and Eternity has been announced for PC. Which, yeah. I feel like retrospectives are gonna have to be more and more involved if the if this is the new face of how games are gonna get announced and come out. Like a game like this being announced probably should lead somebody like me or a group of people to talk about games that came out over the past uh over the entire history of video games that are similar to this how this evokes some of the feelings of alone in the dark how this evokes some of the feelings of dark souls um specifically this game and looking at the trailer the graphics look a little bit like a playstation 3 game playstation 2 game but they don't look terrible um it is possible that there isn't much of a game actually around that concept, but it does seem like it, it has a chance. Yeah, and I, I definitely think shifting focus in a way so that there's less focus around just random games or games that have already come out may be the way to go. Six eight. What an oath. I need 
I screwed up there. Yeah, we have a game on Steam called Tartarian Aster. Very white. Hmm. I don't know if this is supposed to be kind of a surreal game that actually has a story, or if this is just an asset flip game where they just put everything in a big white block box. Three dollars and ninety-nine cents English Japanese. That is off often the problem is that you can hide a bad game around surrealism or just weirdness in general. I'm gonna put this on the follow list. I feel like there's a small chance. I used to be able to win with force craft like crazy. I guess I was right to try and lock in as many victories as possible. Here we have a game called Soul Run, which looks like it's a frustration platformer. Time for me hmm. to prove myself. Oh yeah, I smell yeah. I, I don't think there's there's something here I'd want to play. See, part of the thing about Limbo is that it it isn't the speed run platformer mentality like Super Meat Boy is. You you really are supposed to take your time and and slowly uh, progress forward, and that's much closer to my speed than Super Meat Boy was. This game is coming soon. English full audio. Okay. I don't think I need to put that on the follow list. Gamma Sutra has a job listing here. Hinterland Studio is hiring an art director for Vancouver slash Victoria, British Columbia. I feel like uh, I didn't mention that I, I heavily suspect now that Gearbox has been acquired that we will see Randy Pitchford de decide to retire. And I wouldn't be surprised if we find a significant amount of talent has either already fled Gearbox or will flee Gearbox. Um, because remember, the, a lot of the developers were promised giant bonuses and are underpaid on promises of giant bonuses that then they were not given. Uh, at least that seems to be the case. So you kind of have a company there that is fairly disgruntled and I don't know how you fix that disgruntledness by selling the company to another group of people that maybe they'll treat the employees nice maybe they won't I really also have to suspect Embracer Group at this point of just pulling a ten cent and using trying to gain cultural influence um, by gaining large percentages of ownership around um, around video game companies. And there, there is definitely an argument that the United States should not allow its U.S. companies to be merged slash acquired with Swedish companies, and that we should be a little bit protectionist. It, the United States should be a little bit more protectionist in its government. Uh, governance of its corporations. Uh, next, we have a game on Steam called Everless, which looks like just kind of a bad box pushing game, for lack of a better term. It's early access, 269 English full audio. Do this. And then I do this. And then hit that. It's probably the safest move. Here we have a game called Dungeon, which 
looks like nothing. Looks like it's half deck builder, half random assortment of images. 749 English and Russian. I don't hate this art style. I just feel like this art style needs to be more logically thought out towards an actual game. The fact that these cards have literally no images on them shows that this is clearly low effort. Hmm. All right. This, this, and then this. Then in the turn. Tech Raptor has an article here. Genesis Noir is proof that games are still innovating. Which this is an opinion piece, but looking at the visuals around Genesis Noir does make me feel like that probably is the case. I'm still just like totally failing miserably here. It's been a bad week, to say the least. Um, let's see, Gamma Sutra has a job listing here for Ontario, Canada as a gameplay programmer for Tactics Studios. I don't think I've recognized that company. Um, this one's we're seeing a lot of job listings, although I think it is also worth mentioning that I also saw some, an article that said, uh, according to one survey, 34% of people who are remote working in the United States say they would quit their job before going back to work at that job which that is a large number um, which I think also probably highlights that the worst part of a lot of jobs is not actually doing the job it's dealing with your your, your co-workers or your boss um, that may work out better than it sounds, though, because I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if more than 34% of all bosses would love to continue remote working always so that they don't have to buy even things like toilet paper for the bathrooms or rent in a, a office or uh, supply the break room with any anything. Like, there, there's probably immense savings where... They, they have also not been forced to, to really increase pay at all. Um, which there almost certainly should have been some increase in pay. Um, to employees a long time ago. Um, for many different reasons. Uh, moving on, Gamma Sutra has an article. Ubisoft has acquired the anti-cheat software developer Game Blocks, which uh, they make Fair Fight anti-cheat, which is a software I have never even heard of. Uh, let's see. Uh, Pac-Man 99 is now available, and it has a DLC trailer. Pac-Man 99 as an idea is interesting, but I don't know if it's on PC. I would probably rather play Pac-Man 99 than I would want to play uh, Tetris 99. T Pac-Man is much more in the lines of arcade games I would want to play. And this does kind of feel like this is uh, closer to Pac-Man Championship Edition DX, hopefully DX1, and not the sequel, which was terribly designed. 
So is this? There's a whole bunch of things that are $1.99 each. And then a mode, a deluxe pack for $29.99. So that, that is going to be the problem. Um, is that we are going to see a significant number of shenanigans happen around the pricing from Cap Bandai Namco. Hmm. And honestly, Pac-Man 99 should just be completely free for people who have the online service. Uh, here we have a game on Steam called Battle in the City, which looks like nothing for $1.59. Here we have a game called Lost Words Beyond the Pages. This is already on my fall list. I think I saw it. I must have seen it on Monday. Or I saw it when it was announced and put it on the fall list earlier. There's a chance that this is a really good game. So far, it's 87% positive. There's also a chance that it's just a gimmick and... And it's not really that good. $14.99 English full audio. Uh, my concern is that a game like this might very much be similar to the game Beyond Eyes. Where I was very enthused around the idea of playing Beyond Eyes. And then when I actually got around to playing it, it, it turned out to be not really that good. Let's see. Let's see. Here we have Tech Raptor with an opinion piece, and I feel like this is probably one of the most extreme opinion pieces by Tech Raptor so far. As they've been hiring new people, they've been shifting what kind of content that they make in a direction I kind of don't like uh, very often. Uh, growing Xbox, what a gaming monopoly could look like. The real question, though, is how can Microsoft as a company accomplish what would be in 2021 considered a monopoly? Um, like, because basically nothing is being considered as a monopoly nowadays. Uh, by older standards, sure. Uh, I would say Microsoft probably already is a monopoly. And, that, and in general, if you were going to embrace the idea of not allowing large businesses to exist ever for anything then uh, then that would be a, a good argument it won't be long now. okay So yeah, I, I could on one side say Microsoft is already a monopoly and should be broken up. That Microsoft's online services and its hardware Xbox services and its, um, its Windows versus its Azure uh, server settings and Outlook and all of those should be broken up. But since that's not really the world we live in, um, how does specifically xbox become a monopoly when it has the the odd but still somewhat competing competition of uh, of nintendo there are still dozens of different companies and publishers that own companies uh, ea would have to disappear ubisoft would have to disappear uh, 2k would have to disappear before you would even get down to the point where you would say that microsoft is a monopoly uh, or duopoly between uh, Microsoft and PlayStation and or and Nintendo really would be a triopoly even at that point. Uh, 
Yeah, I suppose if every single publisher disappeared and it was just Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo as first party publishers uh, making games, then you could get down to a triopoly. Um, not a monopoly, for sure. And everything Microsoft is doing is trying to push games on PC and Xbox. So the, the, you've got like two different platforms there. And arguably they haven't really embraced or tried anything to... Um, to... Like they they really haven't tried anything to to embrace Linux that much as far as Linux gaming or Apple that much as far as Apple gaming. Um, that is another element that how can you really say you have a triopoly when there is both Apple and Google with mobile gaming, uh, which is a different thing, but. It definitely highlights the fact that the only reason anybody ever gets in trouble with uh, or gets accused of being a monopoly is when they've pissed somebody off. And as long as they haven't pissed off some politician, then then you can act as monopolistic as you ever wanted to. And there's way worse monopolies that exist. And, like, plenty of electrical providers and cell phone providers and internet providers that should be targeted way before, I'd say, Microsoft would be uh, targeted. Hmm. So, yeah. It, it is definitely a sky-is-falling idea to begin with. Microsoft has acquired a whole bunch of companies and done so far pretty much terrible, uh, nothing. Um, and see, this is really just not an article that was, that has anything to say. It's just paragraph of opinion after opinion after opinion. And this is the kind of article that you would certainly not want to bother to read. And that's why I'm not really reading it. Um, you would have to point out some facts and figures. You'd have to make a, a comparison to a real-world example. Uh, you'd have to highlight monopolistic tendencies of Microsoft from 20 or 30 years ago when completely different people were in charge. Um, oh, that is just terrible. Uh, that is so terrible. I just screwed myself. So yeah, that's just not something I think to worry about at the moment. And ironically, if Microsoft were to ever become part of a triopoly or monopoly or anything like that, the only reason Microsoft at this point looks like it might succeed at doing that is because Sony has completely abandoned um, um, uh, the play field. They, they've completely abandoned the idea of, of succeeding and, and competing. hurry up. I, these streams take like two hours regardless of what I'm trying to do. Uh, Techcraft has an article, Diablo 2 Resurrected Technical Alpha starts this weekend. Which... Okay. I wouldn't want to play the game until it's finished. I would like to play the game when it's finished, but... I, I can't really make a justification for that either. And 
I have to I would have to investigate whether Diablo 1 ever got a resurrected or if this is just straight up um, a case of them jumping to the next game. I can do that. And I pretty much have to do that. Time to say goodbye. This character is just playing a lot of Bane characters. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, Gamma Sutra has Esports Integrity Commission is working with the FBI to probe a Counter Strike Esport cheats. Which I when when people say they're working with the FBI, I have to wonder if half the time that means they filed a report with the FBI, and that's it. Um, I would kind of hope that the FBI has better things to do than worry about esports che cheaters or gambling cheaters. Um, in general, there's more dangerous people out there that they could be investigating. Okay. If I attack that, that doesn't work. If I do that, that works. This, and then this. A uh, game called Wizardry, Wizardry VA launches 2022, which, did we talk about this game? This teaser? I think we did, yeah. This is a dungeon crawler that looks like it has a little bit more animation to it than normal. That still looks like it would be a dungeon crawler. And there's been plenty of other like dungeon crawler style games that normally have more of an anime art style to them so maybe there is a argument around putting it to more of a fantasy art style where that might catch more people's attention uh, monster hunter rise version 1.1.2 update is now available with miscellaneous changes i assume bow before dark dragoon hmm. Here we have a game on Steam called Colony Ship, a post-Earth uh, role-playing game. What's funny is I changed the settings as far as moving the tabs, but it didn't really change anything because as long as I'm still having to go to four different uh, Twitter feeds to make sure I'm getting all the, the posts, I'm still opening up all the tabs at, in the same groups. So I'm jumping around quite a bit. This game is 2249 English only. It doesn't look terrible. It's single player only. Oh, and it just seems like that is too much. I'm going to put this on the fall list, but I, I, that price tag is very, very high. Let's see. Uh, Tech Raptor has Sea of Thieves Season 2 start date is next week. Which I really wish Sea of Thieves was an actual game <laughs> that you could play single player and you didn't have to have like groups of friends to play it. Uh, at a certain level though I also feel like the, the gameplay mechanic is just non-existent. <laughs> there you're just kind of running around doing simplistic things uh, Gamma Sutra has play venture has raised 135 million dollars to invest in startups which is as long as you're seeing investment in new startups too how can you claim somebody uh, well I guess you can, those aren't directly connected you could 
have Microsoft be a monopoly and other people are investing in startups. Warhammer Age of Sigmar Storm Ground launches May 27th, which I've still yet to see a Warhammer game that was well designed. Hmm. This looks like it's a hex grid placement game with some card play elements too. Is this like a Dota clone? Hmm. Yeah, I don't even know what kind of game it is. Put that on the field. A story-driven adventure game, platforming game called The Lightbringer has been announced for the Switch and PC. Let's see what this looks like. Hmm. Uh, doesn't look terrible. A little puzzle platforming. There might be a little bit too much of this. Uh, if so, they'll have to be really careful to make it a good game if that's all it's got. Hmm. Well. Let's see, what are we supposed to play over here? Guess we can do that. Just to make them irritated. A game called Erica is coming to PC on May 25th. It's currently available for PlayStation 4 and iOS. This, I believe, is a full motion video game. There's been several of these full motion video games in the past couple of weeks. Hmm. Which I did suspect we would see more of these uh, because people would have had more free time in the pandemic although they weren't supposed to be getting uh getting together anyways i, I suspect we're probably going to see some people stopped following those instructions and and instead uh decided to to em embrace starting a new project Let's see, um, a digital only E3 for 2021 is set between June 12th and June 15th, which is way closer than I thought, come to think of it. Like, we're in April right now, and so that's a little shocking. Here we have a game called Agrophobia Knock Knock, which... I think is probably a horror game. Maybe around the idea of having agoraphobia, fear of leaving the house. Although, almost certainly the idea of leaving the house and being afraid of that does not work well around the concept of being trapped in a haunted house, which is what almost every other game has. Yeah. You could probably pretty well torture somebody by with agoraphobia by showing them a bunch of horror shows of monsters in haunted houses. Three dollars and fifty nine cents English full audio. I'll put this on the follow us, give it a chance. Let's see. Where's and this and then Roll up here. I walk my own path. And hit that. And then in the turn. Here we have a game called Nation War Annals, which looks like a Chinese uh, simulation war simulator. 
free, Chinese only. Decent price at free, I would say. Here we have a game called Converter, which maybe is an acid flip game. Maybe it's a puzzle platformer. Hmm. I don't really believe it's probably too much. Seems like you're collecting red pills. And I wonder if that's a joke about this being a a red pill versus blue pill. Uh, $11.99 English full audio. I'm, I'm going to put this on the poll list just to see if somehow I'm mistaken on it. But I suspect I am not. Oh, I should have attacked that one. Let's see. Did I predict wrong? In the turn, let's see if this works. A lot of reasons why I'm losing definitely comes down to the fact that I'm just not. I don't understand what these cards do. I have not learned the cards by their face values. They have arguably too many different versions in the way they look. Having an evolved version that looks different from the regular version. Having pretty easy to ignore sound effects. Um, it just does not trigger a memory in me. Because I never bothered to learn, learn those, learn the cards in the first place. All right. Okay. I could play this. I can do this and then this and I shouldn't have done that at that point but whatever and then go ahead and evolve here Hit that, that, and that. Here we have a game on Steam called The Wild Case. Which looks like a point and click adventure game. Definitely looks different. Different art style, different environments. Uh, let's see, 849, English, Russian, German, Ukrainian. I'm going to put it on the fall list. This might be nothing, but... It would be hard to believe it's nothing looking how they've made an actual logo here and put some effort into it. It seems like it probably is around werewolves seeing all these wolf shadows. Um, let's see. A game called Buildings Have Feelings 2 has a release date revealed, which, okay. That's an announcement for a game that hasn't come out yet. Dragon, your hmm. uh, the Day of the Devs is taking game submissions for its Summer Game Fest showcase. Uh, they have until April 9th. If you've got games to submit, I don't know how many people would have games to submit at this point. Hmm. Can't attack. Got you in my sights. Hmm. And hey, let's play. that. I'll strike true. Get that. A 
game called The Signifier Director's Cut for PC launches April 22nd. Let's see. What kind of game is it? First person adventure that blames experimental investigation, psychology, and artificial intelligence. Hmm. I feel like that was a game that came out quite a while ago. And I'm just now like catching up on it. Okay. I didn't do this. How much damage is this gonna do? Four. This is where I truly hmm. So, do we kill, do we attack here, and then do four damage to everything, or do we leave it? I think we leave it. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Gamatsu has a Mass Effect Legendary Edition, details gameplay tuning, rebalancing, and more, if you're interested in looking at this article. Seems like quite a lot of tweaks are going to be made. Hmm. Honestly, I just don't know what to do at this point. I'm going to have to spend like a whole day just trying to get, um, just trying to get victories to get these stupid daily victories done. Um, I'm getting like a 0% win ratio in two and a half hours. Um, I see someone named Max on the chat saying, I'm back, mate. Hmm. Uh, apologies, Max, but I don't recognize your icon or your name. So, if you were ever on the chat before, must uh, it slipped my mind. Um, but, yeah. Also, I suppose... Welcome back is all I can say to someone saying I'm back, mate. Um, not not really a question or anything to to respond to. Let's see, um, Street Fighter Five Championship Edition DLC character Rosa launches April nineteenth. Oro detailed in the Kira Kazama teaser trailer. I I feel like they were also. Yeah, this guy was teased. Apparently this is a character. I don't recognize him. Though. Um, yeah, there, there are probably several characters in Street Fighter V that I would not recognize. I don't recognize Rose either. I have not played or kept up with any of the Street Fighter games. Oh, Max says, I gave you Ben and Ed and the support. I haven't watched your stream in a, in a while. Oh, uh, apologies. Yes, I do recall Ben and Ed. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's aired on my channel yet or not. Um, I played it for a while. It's spoiler. And uh, I found the controls very frustrating. And I was not really willing to... Um, um, I wasn't really willing to try and play it with mouse and keyboard. I think I even did try it a little bit with mouse and keyboard, but by the time I got halfway through Ben and Ed, it, it was just like really, really poorly programmed platforming is what I took from the game. Uh, just kind of too much of a frustration game for me. More and more I've been trying to get away from playing frustration games but i definitely do appreciate when anyone gives me a game and i appreciate max for gifting me ben and ed because that is also the exact kind of game i probably would have never bothered to purchase for myself even though i would like to review those types of games um so that that kind of support is is greatly appreciated so thank you for that Let's speed things up. 
I'm about done today. Uh, Max said, I think one was aired. And yes, the controls were kind of sucky. Yeah, Ben and Ed as a game, as a concept, would have worked way better if there was just somebody smarter uh, behind the wheels programming it. And it, it just was able to, um, to, to have better controls. Uh, because that's what divides a game like Ben and Ed, which is good when you watch somebody like PewDiePie play it and you watch them getting frustrated versus a game that that has kind of a right to sell millions of copies and have actual gamers actually play it for their own enjoyment. Because I, I don't really subscribe to the idea that there are a large percentage of gamers out there that want to play frustration platformers and it's just YouTubers that... Uh, that have turned bad games into this genre th that people are um, are embracing and, and purchasing. Arguably, I would say the same is true for a lot of the early Five Nights at Freddy's. Maybe the most recent ones finally polished that game enough so that it actually uh, is playable. But, yeah. If I was going to go and cover all the Five Nights at Freddy's games, I would almost certainly skip or just spotlight the first uh, games and play only the most recent games. And there is that 3D um, um, the, the, the new 3D Five Nights at Freddy's game that is being developed would probably be the right point to play. Max says, well, they in improved in the second multiplayer game. Yeah, I do vaguely recall that the second game was slightly better. But, but also then that puts me in the Catch-22 where I just don't play multiplayer games. So... Uh, I would, wouldn't have been in a good target uh, to to see that improvement. It, it probably also highlights that I need to go through my wish list and um, uh, I need to go through my wish list and and, and reevaluate some games. Because th there definitely are some games on there that, uh, now that I've kind of matured and, and my fingers have gotten a little less nimble, I need to realize that they're, they're just not games for me. Max says, the jump games like Crash Bandicoot and Mario 64 are hard for players who don't play them regularly. Um, I played Mario 64, it was a long time ago. Um. It would be very interesting if Mario Nintendo games were on PC I, for me to go back and play Mario 64. Um, I also feel like Mario 64 was specifically designed to be easier for kids and that kind of is my pace is that kid platformers work. Uh, but you, you definitely aren't wrong because I've tried to play uh, several other 3D platformers that were inspired by Crash Bandicoot and Mario 64 and every single one that I've tried to play has come off as very frustrating um, and just poorly uh, controlling. Uh, I did play a little bit of Crash Bandicoot uh, more recently but uh, that was a slightly more difficult game than Mario 64, I, I feel like Crash Bandicoot is, was definitely targeting teens and young adults. Um, whereas Mario 64 was targeting um, uh, targeting just younger kids. Um, but I think I probably could if if I found the game, the original Crash Bandicoot, particularly interesting. I think I probably could struggle my way through the main parts of Crash Bandicoot, but then the collecting all the boxes and doing all the little side sections, I think, would have 
would have not interested me because that's just a little too grindy. Hmm. Yeah, Max says Crash was for kids, and look how hard it was for some really good players. Hmm. If anything, the, there's an argument that a lot of the games, the, the first generation of 3D platformers, are given just free passes um, Allow me to take my cut. when if Crash or Mario 64 came out today they they probably would be panned as terrible games um, if Mario 64 came out today and had modern graphics or if Crash came out today and it had modern graphics uh, I've definitely seen that with the re-releases and the continuations of Crash Bandicoot is that every new Crash Bandicoot game I see and I look at it and I'm like, all right, that looks like that is pandering to the fans of Crash Bandicoot. But it still doesn't look like it's um, something I want to play. The Oddworld series is also uh, that that case too. And I'll, I'll fully admit that there are many previous generations of video games that I would not put up with today. Nearly every NES game, nearly every Sega Genesis game are not really... Uh, something I would put a lot of time into. I'd go back and play them for an hour or so out of nostalgia, and and that would be it. Um, but I, I wouldn't try and beat it um, ever. Let's see. Max says, because the first set up high difficulty, then the second and third are super easy. Uh, I assume he's talking about uh, Crash still. Also, I wouldn't recommend doing 100% in the new Crash 4 because of what I see people had, uh, of what I've seen people have gone mad. Yeah, that, yeah. I, I don't like games that sell in frustration. Uh, I, I've got a little bit of arthritis in my hand and it's just getting worse with my age and and I, I'm just not in a place where uh, where I really would want to to play frustration platformers. Uh, I would be much happier if Crash Bandicoot came to PC since I'm a PC gamer and turned into a Banjo-Kazooie, very kid-friendly, very simple game um, as a spinoff. Max says, uh, Crash 1, 2, and 3 were released on PS4 in 2017 and then on PC a few weeks later. Yeah. More and more. Like, right now I'm just playing a bunch of uh, pinball tables I bought like three years ago and forgot about. So, uh, for Pinball Arcade. And that is a very laid-back experience where I'm just pulling the left and right trigger on the controllers. And even that is... Uh, after four or five hours a day of playing is starting to cramp up my hands but yeah I, i've i still tr keep an eye out looking for 3d platformers but i've pretty much abandoned hope that i will actually see one that i like um, and there there is definitely on steam a lot of low effort garbage games that are 2d platformers so you see a lot of potential games that kind of feel like they might be good but you you kind of know they aren't too hmm. the uncharted desert awaits. Help me, somebody. Going to hit that then in the turn uh, let's see, Gamatsu has an article here, Dragon Quest The Adventure of Dai, A Hero's Bound, has a second trailer. Which, this is a little Square Enix mobile game. Which, yeah, it doesn't look terrible, but it is a mobile game. I feel like mobile games still have really failed to find a lot of genres that work well with them. I installed like a blackjack game on my cell phone just to have one and, a, and I'm 
I had to go through like five or six of them to find one that wasn't just completely objectionable, full of like ads and in-app purchases. Alright, well I've got to play something, so select an enemy follower, it can't attack, or select an enemy follower, it can't attack. This is the same card, isn't it? Alright, well... and kill that. Hmm. Uh, Jump King you may have heard about as a 2D platformer. Uh, no, let's look that up in a second here. Here we have a game called Magician's Legacy Prologue, which looks like it is a turn-based uh, ma Heroes of Might and Magic 3 style clone. There might be something to that. As an idea. Maybe. Free to play. How can it be free to play though? I guess because it's a demo. All right. Um. So let's, let's look up Jump King. Yeah, if anything, this probably is evidence that as much as I try to diversify my uh, intake as far as video game news, I am still very much locked into a small collection of sources that I'm willing to listen to. Uh, for instance, uh, Gamma Sutra, uh, Kamatsu, and Techcrafter are pretty much the only video game sources I get and then and on a rare occasion someone will will chat and tell me about a game and very often I haven't heard about it um, so here's that game Jump King from 2019 this is definitely something I don't remember Let's see take up the challenge and face it um, now, somebody did have me play Shovel Knight, and Shovel Knight was a jumping platforming game that I found too frustrating, and this does feel very similar to Shovel Knight in the looks that there's a knight in it, but it seems like you squeeze down to get jumps. Are there any enemies in this game? See, it's tag difficulty, and that in itself kind of scares me away. Like, I kind of don't want to play a game that is just difficult for difficult sake. Hmm. Struggle upwards in search of a smoking hot babe of legend, but explore with care. A single missed jump could lead to a long fall back downward. Yeah, I, I feel like this this could be too long of a game, and it could be very much like getting over it with Bene Fadi, where if I was to actually play that for more than five minutes, I would potentially get very frustrated. Twelve ninety nine is also fairly expensive for a game like this, but all right, it does it is rated very positively, ninety percent positive. So I, I think that deserves to be on the follow list. Um, but if I did get this game and play it, do take note that I, I've, I'm going to reserve the right to rage quit on it very quickly and do just a spotlight on a game like that. But I, I definitely like seeing new games and hearing of new games. This developer hasn't made anything else. Uh, because clearly there are blind spots. And see, I, I try really hard. I, I waste at least nine hours a week looking at it, trying to see every single game that comes out on Steam so there aren't hidden gems locked uh, that I've missed. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, Max also says, 
I also stopped playing Hearthstone because only the good players were playing and I had no chance to learn. Uh, even the bots were too easy to learn new tactics from. I also remembered that I found you when I uh, was nostalgic uh, for a week. Uh, one nostalgic weekend with Lego Batman and couldn't do one puzzle for a red brick. Yep. Uh, my Lego Batman series is probably one of the most successful, uh, most viewed series on my channel. With, regardless of the fact that it's content ID claimed constantly by uh, Warner Brothers. Um, yeah. I'm glad it has helped a lot of people and it certainly has, has gotten me a lot of views. Arguably, a lot of the things though the the lego series in particular get random views instead of subscribers so thanks to max for actually subscribing um uh because yeah i, I get a lot of views i imagine just from little kids tr trying to figure out the lego games even though really my channel is not for kids and even me playing a lego game does not guarantee that i won't go on some wild rant uh, talking about some like adult visual novel or something <clears throat> let's see uh, we have another game on Steam here called Smart Moves 2 which is a pixel art game just doesn't really look that interesting turn based combat mechanics it's kind of like Crypt of the Necrodancer without the music element, I imagine. So I guess the question here, this English-Russian game, was to see if they actually have a game called Smart Moves 1, and if it's well-received. It came out February 25th of 2020, and it has six reviews. So Smart Moves 2 seems to look exactly like Smart Moves 1. It's the exact same images from the looks of it. Uh, so yeah, that looks like that's a Russian game developer just flooding the Steam market. Hmm. Let's see. Next we have a game on Steam here called Internet Court, which seems to be a full motion video joke troll game using Zoom. Which I'm a little surprised we haven't seen more of this as an idea to, to try and have full motion video games made, but still social distance. This is 629 English full audio. Uh, I don't think that there's anything there that, that I'm interested in. Hmm. See, I'm trying to think what kind of, what could you do to actually make this concept work i think you have to i don't know like i i don't think the idea of going to court through zoom sounds like a fun concept in general i think what you would do is not do full motion you draw little dick tracy style gangsters and just weird faces cartoon characters the sneering evil looking characters um, as it were and you you turn it into something close to ace attorney uh, instead uh, is that's the closest idea i can even have uh, to make make that concept work uh let's see gimetsu says a g mode archives title is coming to pc this spring um I have no idea what G-Mode Archives is, though. So, that doesn't really explain much to me at all. Let's see if we can look at the Steam page to get a better explanation. This looks like a cell phone RPG game for cell phones from an era previous. English apparently is not even going to be supported, so I guess I don't have to be too worried about it. Anyways. Let's see. 
Sinran, Nin Nin, Ninja, Tyson, Neptune, Sojo, Tachi no Kyoin launches August 26th in Japan. Eight playable characters confirmed. This is a Neptunia ninja fighting game from the looks of it. Hmm. it. This is the one that is the crossover between the Neptunia series and the Sinran Kagura series. Hmm. Hmm. See, Max said, oh shoot, the stream stopped for me. Okay, it's back. Yep. My network service provider has just gotten worse and worse and worse, so... Yeah, I, I do have a 30 second buffer, which is the best I can do. And I can say that I'm at less than 1% of dropped frames. Although at the very beginning of the stream, there was some dropped frames. Um, so yeah, on my side, at least from what I can tell, it looks like everything is working as good as it's going to. All I need is an hmm. opening and you're toast. Let's see, we have a game on Steam here called the Slormancer, which Got your message loud and clear. there might be something to this. Ow! A Ow! hack and slash dungeon crawler with maybe a little too zoomed out pixel art graphics. This is early access for 1274 English, French, and Chinese. That's an odd combination of languages. But yeah, this is already rated very positively in early access. Very high number of ratings. So I'm going to put this on the follow list. Um, although I am starting to get a little concerned that we may be hitting an era in which people can pay hundreds if not thousands of people to uh, potentially... Uh, Uh, artificially raise the rankings of of their games and they're just like bot farming potentially on Steam I think we are on the verge of seeing that happen more often yeah we have a game called Inmate Survival which obviously is just a low effort survival game $8.99 English full audio I kind of wish a Conan Exiles 2 was announced and came out because if there was a Conan Exiles 2 that came out and it was really good, I would I didn't feel very justified in in my slight desire to play Conan Exiles 1, uh, but not put a lot of time into it and just play it in the single player mode, which is I don't think really the main focus even for that mode. See, we have a game on Steam here called Ladder Box, which is just a box moving game in an isometric 3D platformer uh, perspective, which is slightly different. But yeah, still don't think I'd want to play a game like this. 5% off is an odd discount for $5.69. English and Chinese. Definitely looks like a mobile game. Here we have a game on Steam called Lock Lock Farm, which looks like it is a sliding puzzle that's too simplistic to try and get animals to go from one side to the other. $1.89 English and a bunch of other languages. Yeah, too simplistic of a concept. It might be more that pin and paper game where you're trying to create the pin itself to lock people in certain areas. Uh, yeah, it that's what it is. It's not it's not actually a puzzle game. It's just a timing game of trapping them into boxes. Hmm. Mm. Alright, let's hit this. There you are, my here. What an oath. Hmm. And 
play. Uh, Max says, imagine blowing up and becoming really and being really popular. All people start with a few hundred subscribers. Um, arguably, I would say all people don't start even with a few hundred. I went probably at least half a year or less or longer with less than a hundred subscribers. Um, I believe when I started as a YouTube content creator, you only needed a hundred subscribers to be in the content ID service. So, um, yeah, my, my channel definitely went at least a year, if not two before it could even be in the YouTube content, uh, YouTube partner program and make and run ads. And then I got on it when I got a hundred subscribers and I made a hundred dollars, I think in total. Um, and, uh, over the course of a year with hundred subscribers at that time. And then they changed the conditions of the YouTube partner program so that you needed a thousand subscribers and a lot of watch time, uh, also. And I've been stuck somewhere around four or 500 subscribers since then, uh, with no real indication that overnight I would gain, um, gain another 500 subscribers in any reasonable amount of time. Um, there's, uh, there's also a lot that YouTube has done to basically screw small time subscriber, uh, content creators and new content creators. So nobody can blow up and be successful as far as the idea of imagining and blowing up and being really popular. Popularity to me doesn't really impress that much. My desire is not really to to be the next PewDiePie with 50 million subscribers. I literally would be happy with just a comfortable 10,000 subscribers. I feel like with enough views coming out around 10,000 subscribers, I could probably make enough money to actually legitimately live off of the full-time plus amount of work I put on this YouTube channel. Um, I would like my YouTube channel to to potentially have some reoccurring uh, evergreen income where people are watching my old stuff. That way if I get sick or retire, uh, I can still live off that retirement. But really I'm only looking for enough subscribers and enough income on YouTube to to make at most four thousand dollars a month four thousand dollars would be more than a reasonable amount in my book I, i'm not looking to become a millionaire i'd just like to pay off pay off bills and have a little bit of savings and live a normal life and if i was just trying to become a millionaire uh a i would probably replace myself uh with a somebody who used face cam some attractive young lady or woman um and uh we would i would have them pretty much focus on the brand new games only that would get the most amount of views i would turn into pretty much every other subscribers um uh every other content uh, major youtuber who just is looking to for the next big thing looking to get a million views on the next video and i, I don't want to get stuck in the idea of um, trying to be a celebrity or anything like that. Uh, if I naturally just became very popular, great. Uh, I'm happy for that. Uh, but the main goal of this YouTube channel from day one was for me to do something I wanted to do and play the games I want to play. And if I'm getting away from that, then I'm just working a job. And if I was just going to work a job, I probably could do work a lot less at some other kind of job and make a lot more uh, in most scenarios. Although, uh, uh, Max said, as I said half a year ago, you can get more, more of subs and views if you play something that popular that's on popular right now. You could do Honey Pop Two, um, Honey Pop Two is actually something I would love to do. Um, of course, I've been dropping the ball as far as scheduling things 
anyways the, the one big change i've done on scheduling is i'm starting to set each new uh video on my channel as a premiere for the first episode so people can kind of see what what's coming um but yeah i don't know specifically if honey pop 2 can be played on youtube without without major ramifications i haven't seen any youtuber cover it you would kind of think that game grumps or somebody else would have tried to play it particularly right now when there's just nothing else going on um, so i'd have to play it censored and i would be too late to the party even now if i was to get it and i did the price tag on Honey Pop 2, I think, was fairly expensive. Hmm. But yeah, I, I would generally like to play Honey Pop 2. Let's see. Let's see what the price on it even is. Like. Let me just make sure everything is YouTube family friendly. I think it probably is on the Steam page. Because I'd say Honeypot is the developer is doing a pretty decent job about that. So yeah. We can see this came out on February 8th, 2021. So I'd be fairly late to the party uh, April 8th playing it. Um, it's very positive. It is on my wish list. But I was just kind of waiting till he could get it down to maybe 9.99 i'm being cheap certainly uh and sort of that is definitely the catch 22 honey pop 2 plays a little bit different than the first game which that's that's fine As promised. but yeah that that definitely is at the top of my wish list um um let's see uh, Max says Markiplier does it. I, it was censored. Okay. Yeah, I don't follow Markiplier. Um, that that is part of the problem, certainly too, is I don't even watch YouTube game content creators. I watch a few Minecraft content creators, and that's about it. And when I'm watching YouTube these days, I'm watching completely different things. I I lost interest in following other game streamers. Hmm. This enemy that I'm fighting looks familiar. Um, Chika Fujiwara. She's part of the crossover event from this anime uh, where she is the friend of this girl and boy in the anime. And the girl and boy both ha secretly have a crush on each other, but they're too stubborn to admit it. So they go through these shenanigans trying to trick the other into confessing that they're in love with them um and chika fujiwara um, um tries to manipulate them both so that they'll finally just get over with it and and um admit that they like each other um, yeah i turned on the animations on the characters to see because the trailer showed more animations for these crossover characters, but they, they really don't seem to really exist. Uh, here we have a game on Steam called Head Count, which looks like another asset flip first person shooter uh, game. Early access for $4.99 English only. It's a VR game, but it's far too blocky for my taste. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I screwed that up. Terrible. It's no surprise I'm losing so much. Is I just play the cards completely in the wrong order. Over and over again, I, I'm realizing I'm doing that. Uh, here we have a game on Steam called Dramatical Murder, which is some kind of LGBTQ plus visual novel. It looks like it's guys. Yeah, it looks very nicely animated. Hmm. Some of it looks like it might have a bit more gameplay in it than I bet it really does. Like this 
scene. Where is it? Here. This with the bar's shield and attack and all that. But I bet that's just a story. $17.99, Japanese full audio. I want to put this on the follow list. There's not a lot of guy on guy gay uh, visual novels that get made. So, try to be as balanced as possible. Now would be the time to play Corrupting Blood. Yeah, we have a game called Race on Ice Pro 2021 Pro, which obviously is a low effort Unity demo asset flip. So you can see, powered by Unity even. $9.99, way too expensive for that game. Let's see, uh, Tech Raptor has an article, Vodio Games, Beast Breaker comes to PC this summer and, this, and Switch this summer. This looks like it's, uh, I think I, they described it as half pinball, half arkanoid. Let's see if we can, yeah. It's like a hack and slash game while you're also bouncing yourself up. Hmm, there might be an idea to that. It's an interesting mixture of two concepts at least. We want to do that or that. Let's do this. this is an extension mm. of my Let's soul. defile the battlefield. Do that. Right, so hit that one. I love and the chaos. Am I gonna die? -daisy. No, I think we're safe. Hm. Let's see. Uh, Techcraft has an article, this isn't video game related, but Street Fighter the Miniatures game review has been review bombed on BGG, which I don't even know what that is, over shipping charges. This is Board Game Geek, I guess, is BGG. Interesting. Yeah, shipping on any kind of like Kickstarter or anything is the killer. Um, certainly. And it massively increases the expense of physical goods. So it, that really highlights why there's even now far too many people that make make limited edition games and, and releases when they shouldn't right well I can play this I can play this Whipsy Daisy do that and then don't oh, really want to play that I think I want to play this. Hmm. And then I think I want to do that. And then... Evolve that. And hit that. Let's see, Tech Raptor has an article, Curse of the Dead Gods gets Dead Cells crossover event. Which, okay. That's interesting. Here we have a game on Steam called The Core Piercer. Which looks like nothing. $1.79 English full audio. But I want to see here. If I was going to go to Steam, let's go 
straight to what Steam is showing me right now as the top promoted products. Um, although, in all fairness, I, I do have some ad blocking on. It Takes Two, a game you have to play twice. Busty Biz, which I could see myself trying to cover a lot of these adult games. Um, even free to play ones that really don't need criticism or curation by a critic. Uh, but then that would never get me in the YouTube Partner Program. So uh, at a certain point, that that would be the admission that I just don't care about ever making even a living off of my content. And it probably would get my YouTube my channel deleted. And that's the the scarier thing is to lose all the the time and effort I've put into this. I have over like nine thousand videos. Um, and that that would be very scary. Hmm. Let's see. I hate to judge verses, not vices. So yeah. Yeah, if I could guarantee that my channel was wasn't gonna get all its content deleted, I would cover a lot more dull games. Because those are also games that don't get crit reviewed very often. Uh but yeah, we were looking what's being advertised if I was just trying to find the brand new things. You've got like Bleach here as a free to play mobile port. You've got The Hunt, which I believe is a multiplayer game, Hunt Shadows, Mech Warrior Slayers, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, that that would I'd be playing that right now if I could afford the twenty nine ninety nine. I'm just not in the position where I want to buy brand new games at the brand new price. This simulation game of Jurassic World Evolution, maybe I'd give that GTA Five. There isn't a lot new going on there. DCS World Steam Edition. Destiny 2. I really wouldn't want to play that. Spiral Knights. I haven't heard of this game. It's free to play. So, yeah, not a lot of options. Whereas, if I was going to maybe go for things that are slightly discounted at like 35% off, Golf with Friends makes a lot of sense, but then that's another multiplayer game. Spirit Fair, now would be a decent time to play Spirit Fair. You're not getting a huge discount, but you're getting about ten dollars off, and that is a game that was already on my wish list. Or Children of Morta for ten dollars and ninety nine cents. Now is kind of a perfect time to play this. When did Steam start putting down countdown timers? They've updated their website to put more pressure on you to purchase, haven't they? Uh, Children of Morta is kind of a great pick. Um, the Sims 4 at 88% off sounds like a good deal, but then there's so much DLC. Um, uh, let's see, 2K21, I really don't feel like I'd want to play a realistic uh, golf game. Although, yeah, at some point I could see myself playing one of them, but only one. Dead by Daylight is a multiplayer game, and ironically... Crash Bandicoot is here. Uh, I got control for free on um, good old games, and I didn't like it enough to want to come back and even spend $15 for the Ultimate Edition uh, to do the DLC. The Halo Master Chief Collection, I should be playing that, certainly. That would give me a long collection of Halo games that I've never even played any of the Halo games, and that is definitely... An issue. Um, Binding of Isaac Afterbirth DLC. Sure. I, I could see playing that right now. Uh, I think Rebirth is the newest one though. So you're getting kind of DLC Inception. Detroit is too expensive at $27.99. Even discounted. Spyro. Certainly the Re Reignited Trilogy. Like I don't know why some of these games aren't on my wish list. They should be. Uh, Katana Zero, sure. 
uh, slight discounts. But then when you start getting down to the straight slight discounts, uh, you're also then not really talking about the newest of games. Um, yeah, I feel like these games are on my wish list. Yeah. They are talking, there are rumors certainly that that they're making a new Alan Wake 2. Uh, they're making Alan Wake 2. Let's see, Outriders is one that's being talked about a lot. So that would be a top new game to play if I was just chasing the trends. Let's see, if we look specifically at new releases... What do we have? You, your Discovery Q, Evil Genius 2. I'd be playing that right now, but that's too expensive. Um, like, I could see myself, certainly, uh, if I was rolling in cash, which I'm not, by any means, uh, I could see myself just live streaming every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and just buying brand new games and just playing them for five minutes or for however long I wanted to play them and then that that may be turning into pre-recorded footage anyways uh, in the past I've tried to make pre-recorded footage is much more critical and much more thoughtful but after doing this for so long as I have it's been many years uh, I've kind of run out of a lot of things to say for a lot of games so sitting in silence and just playing a game on the live stream like so many other live streamers might might be a different way of doing things there are arguments that that's not really fair use if you're not adding commentary or adding anything to it um which is a whole separate issue there are arguments that that's not really that interesting to play a game and, and not really have anything to say and just sit and and play in silence which I probably wouldn't do a lot of that but I probably would end up saying less if I was playing a lot more games there I got a victory uh, took forever I still need one more bloodcraft victory Uh, looking here at this list, we have My Married Cousin's Need for Seed, adult game, Out of the Park Baseball, Somewhere with Mia Season 1, more and more we're seeing. The, this game, Mr. Prepper, was definitely one that I put on the fall list. The, the whole concept of... The fall list falls apart though if I start just chasing after new games because then I I almost started. never am going to be able to play a game before other people play it and review it. We have like Fimboy Bangers, Fimboy Beasties. Somebody's putting out quite a few adult games. Lewd Girls, Cute Honey 3, Prop Hunt from 20. 21. Hmm. There's definitely some under 10. And, and if you just get away from popular new releases and just look at new releases, then you're seeing pretty much everything that I am looking at, just in a slightly different order. Yeah. Yeah, we, we we could always imagine and see, frankly, I would much prefer to win, like, a publisher's clearinghouse, win $1,000 every week type thing, or win the lottery first, then before even beginning to fantasize about winning a, um, a popularity contest on YouTube, because there is the a decent chance that YouTube might die in the next 10 years. Like it, it tries very hard to, to irritate a lot of people. Eventually it's going to succeed at that. Uh, yeah. Spyro is on the wish list. It came out a while ago. 
uh, though, so it's not brand new, and it was a re-release. I've never played the Spyro games. I was almost 100% exclusive to Nintendo games growing up, so uh, I could see playing this. And this would be a great comparator to Lego I games, which were running out of Lego games. Look at that, I got a free victory by just forgetting to play. Hmm. Let's see, Katana Zero is on the wish list also. It came out on April 18th, 2019. So most of these games that are on sale and they're barely even discounted are six months to a year old, even in the pandemic. The Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is on my wish list. It came out on June 29th, 2018. Yeah, I think I could struggle through this, but I'm not going to try 100% this game when it, whenever I get around to playing it. Um, and yeah, I think what you'd do with Crash Bandicoot, if you were really going to do something with them, would be to... Um, to reboot the series and make it a little bit easier. It would just be RuneCraft and HavenCraft victories to going forward. And I think there's a decent chance that that's not going to work. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Like, it's been a while since I've played one of these open world games. I kind of stopped with the Assassin's Creed games. I do have Assassin's Creed 3, so, but not the remaster. So that would be the next Assassin's Creed game to play. However, I would much more enjoy playing a more modern version on this as far as Her Horizon Zero Dawn a Complete Edition. For $30, though, you know, I'm, I'm just not really... In the mood of wasting a lot of money on games, um, at the moment I'm waiting for Steam sales. Uh, Max says, don't do 100 man, don't torture yourself. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, like, I, I don't have the the attitude enough to, to stick to something particularly frustrating for very long. I get frustrated, and uh, I don't have gamer moments and say gamer words, at least, but... Um, but I, I do get frustrated and, and recognize that myself and put down games very quickly. Uh, Halo Master Chief Collection is another example of that, certainly, where for $19, that's a really great deal. Um, I just haven't gotten around to spending that money. Um, and... I wouldn't want to play all the Halo games and try and get all the skulls and all the 100% on Halo either because I, I'm not that good of a first-person shooter. But I think I could play every Halo game at normal, if not a little bit easier than normal, maybe. I'd have to drop down. Um, and I would be able to get the story and move the story forward and play the experience. Uh, although, arguably, in Halo's case, a lot of the experience was around the time that it came out playing with your friends online or playing with your friends split screen. And so not not being able to experience that now nowadays, playing Halo 1, playing Halo 2, probably isn't going to be as amazing an, an experience as it would. Same is true for like GoldenEye 64. GoldenEye 64 if you play it today by yourself in single player mode is a pretty terrible game. But it was an amazing game in its heyday when it was really the only first person shooter to ever even have been made um, uh, around the time or that was in 3D. Uh, here's a new game that came out called Number Game, 24 Points, which clearly is nothing. For 84 cents, that's an odd price. English only, third party EULA. We have about three more games that have come out and three more things. You can play Apex Legends for in free time. It's fairly easy and will prepare your Halo, you for Halo games, says Max. Uh, 
yeah, I, I don't, I don't think I probably need that level of preparation. I think I could without any warm up, um, uh, play Halo. And I would say I think Halo is probably much more of a relevant game than Apex Legends is. I've had no desire to play it. Hmm. And frankly, I'm in this weird position because I have arthritis in my hands where I don't think warming up and getting better at first-person shooters is in the cards for me. I think what is going to happen is for every game that I play that wears out my fingers a little bit more, uh, I'm just going to get a tiny little percentage worse and worse at games as I just start getting older, too. Uh, the young kids will eventually lap me. Um, and I don't think it is a matter of practice. In the same way that even a professional Olympian is not going to be able to continuously compete um, uh, into their 50s and 60s and compete with the 18-year-old uh, Olympians that are uh, out there. I did play, uh, like, Fear 2 most recently, and that, that was fine. So, Fear 2 is about in the same time as the Halo series is. Apex is free also, DD. There's no need to spend. Yeah, and this is really going to sound like excuses. Here Here we have a Zumba clone called Secrets of Egypt. It doesn't look that interesting. Although I am always trying to find a good ancient Egyptian themed game. I have yet to do it. Uh, this is English and Russian and 599 is too expensive. But yeah. If I zoom in here. And we look at Apex Legends. Just to, to, this is going to sound like me making excuses and in part it probably is. The, the problem with a free to play game is there's no reason for a video game critic to really review a free to play game. Arguably this, I could make an argument that this isn't fully a free to play game because there's all of these. DLC elements that seem to probably unlock something of importance. Uh, unless unless Max can tell me these are all just around skins. It, so, as a critic, I don't really have a big desire to, to, to review a game that's free. Because I can literally just say, check out Apex Legends. I'm not sure I've given Apex Legends even five seconds of my time. This actually looks like a fine kind of Overwatch style uh, game. Hero player versus player game. Um, but it also kind of violates one of the styles of games that I play in that I only really play single player games. So that's why it's not on the fall list. That's why it's not on the wish list. Is because, um, oops, because it's an online only game. And thus, again, as video game critic, my experience playing against some people will be incredibly different versus, um, versus someone else. Because you could easily have a rotten group of people that are cheating and, and ruining the experience in an online game, or you could have a great group of buddies that are working together and really succeeding, uh, your mileage just will vary. So, yeah. Apex Legends, I will say, does look interesting. It, it looks good. It look, looks like a half Borderlands, half Overwatch clone. Um, maybe there's a kind of lack of variety of characters. Seems like there's only three or four, and maybe they'll slowly add more in. But it, it, it really is, in two different ways, it's just not a game that uh, a video game critic can play that much of. Um, but, yeah, I, I like to look at it. Yeah. Uh, Max says, DLCs are just skins. Don't bother. I don't have them either. Yeah. Yeah, Apex Legends also feels like it kind of has a little bit 
of the bullet storm sliding and shooting mechanic which that's a pretty good mechanic too and i do have bullet storm which is a single player kind of version of that so that that would be i imagine the one to to play um the game for me to play to be somewhat similar to apex legends and, and that's actually a really good thought for to play bullet storm I, I think i have it but then they resold the hd version of it but i don't think it's really worth buying the uh hmm. Um, so, so yeah, uh, that, that's probably why I haven't played Bulletstorm is because I didn't want to play the, the game. Actually, I may have actually covered Bulletstorm on my YouTube channel. I'm also hitting that point where I can't even remember what I've covered, which is another issue, certainly. Uh, Max says there's pretty much, uh, there is pretty much characters, uh, like 16 Apex is in the Titanfall universe. Hmm. Well, then that actually would work very well for me to get, get around to, to playing Titanfall, which I don't think I own Titanfall either. And that's probably why I haven't played it. Like, let's see. Titanfall. Is Titanfall 1 just not on Steam? There it is. Hmm. Okay, this. This. this and try that yeah what what's the deal with titanfall here why is titanfall rate rated very negatively because this was on the fall list and overall it's 50 percent positive hmm it has ei uh, origin it has the EA account has this just been review bombed or is Titanfall play terribly it's unplayable on PC computer this was April 7th if you have an Xbox or PlayStation get the game on that but don't get the PC computer it's unplayable uh, the servers all messed up online only game with no servers available to play Steam should remove this game from the store interesting well, that certainly highlights an issue. So I'd have to skip then from Titanfall 1 to Titanfall 2, which is on my wish list. And it'd be $29.99, no discount at all. And see, I certainly don't like the idea of skipping straight to Titanfall 2. Um, hmm. Max asks, asks, why is, is it low? It, there's a 30 second delay, so I'm sure he'll hear me say why in a second. So yeah, I, I don't generally like the idea of skipping the first game in a series to then play the second game, even if I was just gonna spotlight the second game. And there is a single player element on Titanfall, so that would make more sense. And be more playable. <clears throat> Max says I remember it being so popular. Yeah, it's the PC port is the problem. And limiting myself to only being willing to play things on Steam does occasionally have that happen where a PC port of a game uh, on Steam in particular is just not acceptable. Um, and also game being particularly older it might be a case that some games had 
had a good experience the year it came out on the hardware it was developed for, but then some new CPU, GPU combination, some update to Windows. Um, that definitely was the case with the LEGO games, that uh, there was a decent number of LEGO games that played well at some point on PC, and then they played particularly bad. And then they started to play a little bit better when I built a new computer and used an AMD CPU instead of an Intel CPU. Hmm. Max says it may be because of the cheaters in the first game, but they are sent to Purgatory, a PvP of cheaters. Uh, punishment of cheating is playing against cheaters. Yeah, I'm familiar with that concept. Uh, it didn't seem like for the couple of reviews I sk sk skimmed that they were just saying cheaters were ruining it. Generally, people don't downvote a game just because of cheaters. They, they downvote it because the servers themselves lag. Here's an interesting game uh, that's come out called Big Watermelon. It looks like it's half Tetris, half 2048, but then instead of using numbers, you're merging different sizes of fruit together to a bigger experience this kind of feels like a cell phone game from the looks of it no it definitely feels like a cell phone game 89 cents chinese only hmm i kind of feel like though because you have this unique physics here and the fruits don't line up exactly right that there is a chance this would be good so i'm gonna put that on the fall list um Uh, let's see, we have a couple more articles and then we're going to wrap up today. Uh, Sword of Legends Online is coming to the West this summer. We'll see how well that succeeds as a what looks like an online Chinese RPG. The graphics look good, but this could be just a generic MMO. Hmm. Well, it looks really pretty. I cannot deny that. It looks very pretty. But that there's a decent chance that that was the intro trailer video and the actual game doesn't look anything like that. Uh, looking at the screenshot, it seems like this is probably what you're doing is more of a RPG style group of three attacking monsters game. But even that looks pretty pretty. I mean, that's not bad. Uh, let's see. The puzzle adventure game The Last Cube is coming to the PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC in 2021. I think we already talked about this. There is there is a game called Cube, uh, C-U-B-E, with periods in between it. I don't think that this game is in the, from the same developer. So, it looks to me like this is a puzzle game that has you controlling cubes and moving forward in kind of a narrative experience instead of just randomly giving you puzzles. And so there might be something around that concept. We're seeing a lot of variety in the visuals in the background and such. And definitely I've played several cube-type games where there's a human moving a cube for no real reason. The human is just added because you assume a human would be involved in the story. So the idea of just controlling a cube directly is a little different. Uh, and then Gamatsu has an article here. New Replicant version, whatever this number is, goes gold a while ago. So apparently... Uh, it went gold quite a while ago, according to Square Enix. I believe Near Replicant is the... I guess it's not the mobile phone version. There's like two Near games coming out at the same time. This is the PS4 and Xbox One. And if they're saying this went gold a while ago, that means that they submitted it for submission a while ago. And something is delaying it being accepted by, I assume, PlayStation. Hmm. C Max says if you like single player you could play down 
played Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal. I did cover Doom 2016. Uh, it should have aired on my channel. Um, if it hasn't aired on my channel. No, it definitely has aired on my channel. Doom Eternal? I haven't gotten around to it. Um, I will say some of the higher levels of Doom 2016 were a little too challenging for me. When doing the challenges to get the runes, for instance, were a little too challenging. And Doom 2016 in general uh, was a little too linear for me. But that is kind of what the original Doom games were. I, I honestly think I covered every single Doom game I owned before I aired Doom 2016. The only ones I don't have are Doom 3 and Doom 3 BFG edition, which are like two very different versions of it. Um, and Doom Eternal, yeah, it's it's on the list. I just didn't get around to playing it because it was a little too new and I'm still going through old games and trying to get... I still want more old games than I want uh, brand new games, but I am slowly over the years converting to towards playing um playing newer games that are closer to the day and date the the idea when i first started my youtube channel is i'd play a bunch of old games that that were cheap from um the uh the steam sales and i would magically get successful enough on steam um uh, on youtube that YouTube would be paying me, say, $100 a month or more, and then I could use that money to invest in buying a new $70 game every month. Um, unfortunately, YouTube didn't, I did not magically get successful on YouTube <laughs> to the point where they were paying me $100 a month or more, so I, I just got stuck in step one, as it were, as far as just playing old games. And I have so many old games anyways. Like Resident Evil remakes are kind of a great example of that too. Is, uh, I haven't purchased Resident Evil 7. Uh, and I'd love to play that. I haven't played Resident Evil 2 remake, Resident Evil 3 remake. I would love to play the day and date uh, release of Resident Evil Village. I'd love to catch up on all that. But those games, particularly from the Resident Evil series, are... Um, are always going to be a little bit expensive because they don't go on sale. Uh, Capcom doesn't put things on sale as much. Uh, Borderlands 3. Like, I still have Borderlands, the pre-sequel, to play. And so I haven't gotten around to playing that. But then I would have uh, liked to have had more time to play Borderlands 3 on day, day and date. It probably would have been fairly fun to be hyped in playing Borderlands 3 the day it came out. But then Borderlands 3 also creates the problem of there being so much DLC. And you know that there's going to be so much DLC that you might as well wait till a ultimate DLC version of it is released. Uh, instead of the season pass garbage that they try to push people through. Hmm. Um... And that, that is another factor of, of a reason why I'm not playing brand new games is because brand new games are never really complete these days. Let's see. Uh, Max has tweeted several things. Uh, nice. Eternal is so much better. I, I bet it is. And I will get around to it. Doom, not my most favorite first person sh shooter. It's a little too heavy metal for me. Um, but I think the reboot took it in a nice direction and did it. I, I kind of wonder if some fans of the old Doom maybe found Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal a little too easy, but those hardcore fans can just increase the difficulty or complain on forums. They they really can't. They can't be the target audience. The destructible demons and graphics in the music is marvelous. Don't buy Doom 3, only buy the BFG edition for Doom 1 and 2. Uh, and Resident Evil 7 is really good. Yeah. That's. There, there is definitely a, a 
large list of games I would like to play and just haven't gotten around to it. Um, and I've, if anything, between insomnia and just laziness, I've, I've failed to really schedule a lot of videos and, and record a lot of videos uh, that I could too. So I still have probably a thousand plus games that I haven't covered on my wish list. So, but a lot of them are also very old. I haven't gotten around to playing um, the third Tomb Raider game in the Tomb Raider reboot. I think I played the second one. Yeah, I did. Um, which, that's part of an issue too. There's several series where I've started and then not finished them. And I don't want my channel to go years upon years of not finishing a story or completely forgetting what happened in the first or second version of a game. So, yeah, definitely, I think next time there's a summer sale, which we're probably not that far away from, uh, I need to go through my wish list and look at a lot of games that that I have the second or third version of, and, and I need to finish some of the mini-series as they were, some of the trilogies, excuse me, uh, on my channel. Alright, so I went through my Twitter feed. We have a job listing here for Hinterland Studios, an art director in Vancouver, British Columbia. I think we already talked about that. Uh, I have about six tabs that maybe are new uh, over the three and a half hours I've been streaming. Also, it's fairly late. Uh, the King of Fighters 15, my Sinren new trailers and screenshots are here. Uh, not to be confused with the Street Fighter 5 characters. It's probably no coincidence that both Street Fighter and King of Fighters are announcing new characters at the exact same time. I remember this character. She's very busty and the boob jiggle physics are in effect. Wearing this Chinese dress. Which I guess you don't see too many people in Chinese dresses these days. Hmm. Big poof of hair and spiritual, like, ropes around her arms. Hmm. I think they're, they're part of spiritualism, uh, Hinduism or Shintoism. Here we have a game called Capsule, action shooter roguelike. Hmm. I don't think there's enough of a game here from what I'm seeing. This this feels like it's just trying to make drug references and be funny. Or it's trying to take the idea of the pills in Binding of Isaac and make a shooter game just around that idea only. This is 339 English only. I'm not impressed by that description. Here we have a game called Cozy Grove. Which... Yeah, this looks like something. This might be a bit of a 2D Stardew Valley type game. They're calling it a relaxing hidden object game. Interesting. If this is a hidden object game, this looks very, very different from a standard hidden object game. If anything, I would say it almost feels like a modern take on Toe Jam and Earl. Where you're wandering around finding items and collecting them and trading them. 1349, bunch of languages. Yeah, I, I think I recall seeing the trailer for this. This looks interesting. Um, came out today. So yeah, if I was going to play a brand new game at full price, this would probably be my pick for today. It's Cozy Grove. But also if I was going to play it, uh, then I'd be recording or streaming for several more hours today yeah a lot of games I play are not first person shooters I, I try to balance it out uh, so that there's n it's not 100% first person shooters on on my channel uh, particularly since I'm only airing two pre-recorded shows on the weekdays anyways here we have a game called High Forge which kind of looks like just an ugly RPG I kind of like this art style uh, this like vi video filter on the characters but the actual game itself 
just doesn't have any polish. The heads up display is missing. I'm not really seeing a lot of enemies. It feels very asset flippy. It's twelve dollars and seventy four cents. Let's see, Max is chatting. Um, Let's see, also you can 100% Doom Eternal on the first playthrough. At the end of each level, there's a teleport option. So you can go get secrets you missed. There definitely were some secrets in Doom 1 that I could not find as far as finding the little collectible mini figures. Um, I did appreciate that Doom 2016 did have those collectibles though and the power-ups. But, but there, there were a few I, I missed and it got a little frustrating. You can get Doom 1, 1 and 2 for your hub areas, 1966 PC. Doom 1 is for all ch cheat codes found in the game. Cheat codes, note codes. And Doom, t Doom 2 is for a code. You can find it somewhere. Yep. I already own Doom 1 and 2 though, so getting it in the game is, is really just a matter of pride more than something that you actually need to do um i did not like in doom one that you would get to these secret areas and you would open up like a a hole in the wall and then you would walk through the wall and it would change the graphics to doom one and in doom 2016 it was only unlocking a few of the levels being remade with the new engine in doom one Instead of remaking all four episodes of Doom 1. Uh, so Doom Eternal does sound like it kind of addresses that somewhat. Like theoretically I would like to be able to run with the new engine of Doom Eternal. Through the level designs of Doom 1 and Doom 2. And just very quickly kill all the monsters and beat it. And feel like oh the with the evolution of gaming in general now it is very easy to play Doom 1 and Doom 2 uh, in this new way um, but I'm not sure they quite get to that even in Doom Eternal because they probably just make you play the old Doom 1 and Doom 2 which are fairly difficult uh, where you can't jump and that that is part of the main thing is that you want to be able to jump and double jump and, and have like a hook shot and whatever other features are in Doom Eternal uh, with the general level layout of the original maps. I would say also one of the things that gets was done poorly with Doom is the idea and introduction of Snap Map and online multiplayer that really shouldn't have existed. Instead, they should have just had a standard level that people could have modified uh, and that's what they were trying to do with snap map, but they didn't really work with it. And there wasn't really a way where you could just make a snap map file and post it to some website, some Dropbox link, and then share it with a bunch of other people. Instead, it all had to be integrated into the Bethesda account. And with Microsoft now owning Bethesda, maybe we will see a Doom 3 game. Which I assume they're going to probably try and make some some more Dooms. Uh, that does have much more of an open standard as far as level design. And then I think my f last article here is we have Tentai Boku Mai Mitsu Details Game Flow Glossary and Detective Profiles. Which just looks like a visual novel. No, not quite a visual novel. It's also got some RPG elements. Hmm. I'm not sure this game is actually going to come to the West. I think this is like a murder mystery detective type game. Uh, although they are tagging it as a visual novel. Hmm. So, yeah. Let me just reload my Twitter feed and see if there's anything new. And then I think that's going to be it for the stream. So I'm going to preemptively apologize to Max if he puts anything else on the chat because of the 30 second delay. There is definitely a um, possibility that he'll bring up something interesting to talk about. Yep. 
Uh, yeah. Last thing I need to do is just see if there's a new Humble Bundle. Which I suspect, no. Well, actually there is. There is a new Games hum Humble Bundle spring into VR. So pay a dollar to get detached. I've never heard of that. Pay more than the average of fourteen seventy-five, which isn't terrible for VR games to get Star Trek Bridge Crew. That's a really good offer. Uh, this is actually kind of a great idea in general because if you don't have VR but you think at some point you will have VR, donate all this money to whatever your charity of choice is and get a Steam code for Star Trek Bridge Crew and Surgeon Simulator. Uh, those are two good games. Sword of Gora, uh, Esper 1 I haven't heard of, Job Simulator for $15, Borderlands 2 VR for $15. That's a really great game. This Sarantino uh, game might be pretty decent either. Uh, also, so yeah, I choose Electronic Fre Frontier Foundation as my charity of choice, but yeah, choose any cho charity you want. Spend $15 and maybe you'll never actually play any of these games because you never actually get VR, but in, at worst case scenario, you've donated to to a charity of your pick. Anyways, well, that's going to be it for the stream. I want to say a very large thank you to Max for chatting on my uh, stream and talking to me. Um, also, I need to always thank people who have gifted me games once again for thank you for um, what is it, Ed and let's see. Hmm. I can't even see. Where was it? What was the name of the game? <laughs> Man, that, that really shows how memorable it was that I forget it. Hmm. Ben and Ed, sorry. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Max, for, for giving me Ben and Ed. <laughs> that is me forgetting the name twice has more to do with the, the quality of that game than than it does you. Uh, so please don't take offense. Anyways, that's going to be it for the stream. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my video because that's what YouTube wants and YouTube must be fed as the monster that it is. If you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites so you get more notifications, there's a bunch of links down below. And if you want to support me further, there's a link to Patreon. Or you can friend me on Steam and gift me a gift card or gift me a game off my wish list, which is always appreciated once again. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.